Yeah, we're definitely going to need more than eight hours, you know, when history well, geeks get talking. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And we are live. That's yeah, cool. we are. We are live. Oh, wait, look at that. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, uh, which link do we send we you? Should, uh, we should probably wait a bit until uh, we get some viewers in, I think. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Just I am. See if the notification comes up. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, oh, we've got one. Welcome. Got one. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Oh, four. It's gone quickly. What, four already? My God. Yeah, six now. So, well, you're really very popular now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it one or two minutes and uh, see if we can get people in. Yeah, no, just well, while everyone's coming in, just apologies for the delay. I know I said in my video and uh, in Kevin's video as well that yeah. you know we try and get it for eight o'clock, but we're very new yeah. to this kind of software. You know, I'm actually a caveman. I don't have any modern technology, so yeah. it's all very new to me. Yeah, and I'm obviously from uh, Anglo-Saxon England, so I'm, I mean, what is a computer these days? <laughs> yeah, the Wi-Fi in Wessex is terrible, so you know. Yeah, yeah. Alfred, you know, the guy won't fix it these days. You know. He has too many Danes to deal with, you know. Yeah, exactly. They keep stealing the bloody Ethernet cables, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's actually where one of the uh, the old names comes from, you know. The guy, uh, the, the Lord of Mercia, that was actually Etherred of Mercia. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's very clever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Evil cable. Yeah. Yeah, evil cable. <laughs> yeah, they want the internet waves. That they want because they think it's some kind of sorcery, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah, all the Galdors and, you know. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the strings of the norns. Yeah, yeah, they are. I mean, you know, they they run the internet actually, and we, we have to. Oh wow! Well, buy, buy buy it, you know. That's yeah. That's, you know, fate <laughs> takes us to which pages it will. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, what, what was that thing in old English? Uh, I, I I should know it. Something to do with fate, like weird. Uh, uh, bit aret, bit yeah. Full aret, isn't it? Something like yeah, that. Full yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What it is, yeah. I think it translates to something like fate is inexorable, I think. Something, something, like, something that. like that. I mean, yeah, the right ways to look at it, you know, but like, let's mm. not, you know, dive tonight because we have much more in stuff to talk about. Yeah. Right. It's in, it's in um, the Last Kingdom a lot, I think. Oh, yeah, of course. Course, yeah, course. although I think they translate it like a bit simpler in the uh, TV series. I think they say destiny is all before each oh, episode. Really? Yeah, no, so just... it's the uh, same meaning ish, I guess. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, yeah, I think I'll give it another minute and then I think we might as well. On, what, get how away. do we send this to people? Uh, like, that's the thing, you know? Like, uh, hang on. Um, I don't know. It's Let me have a look. I mean, yeah, well, well, I mean we both, we're both new to this one. We both know, don't know what we're doing. Um, yeah. How do we wait? Isn't there an invite thing on the top uh, left of your screen? Like you, you know, you have your hang a button, you have the gear button, then you have the mute button, and then um, uh, you know, how you invited me to this thing? Yeah, I, I copy and pasted the link for that, but I think if I do that, then we're gonna get like uh, my loyal oh, fan right. base also talking, <laughs> which would be interesting, oh. but. But that'll be for another time, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think that'd be a great idea for one time, but yeah. You know, is there a chat room? Wait, hang on, hang on. Is, I think there, that must be. Yeah, because on top left here, uh, there's a blue button, you know, and it's a uh, chat, Let's chat see. group chat, and there's no. Oh, it's in. just you joining and leaving. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, I think that's like the chat of the uh, the people talking. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Oh man. Hang on, let me no, let me go on YouTube, man. Yeah, hang on, let me just go on YouTube. Yeah, perhaps it's. I think it might be YouTube actually. Hold on. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Go to your channel. Oh wait, yeah, it's live now. Oh, 19 watching. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, there's a. Ch oh wait, the. Ch oh my You've... God! Look at the chat. Hold on, I can't see the chat. <laughs> no, 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 like no, go, like here's the link to your own, like Hilbert. Yeah, I can see, see that. Okay, go to yeah. Click on the link I sent oh, you. Oh right, like, yeah. Chat, and you see like. But the thing is, when you enter that link, mute the video, the the stream there, because like oh, they yeah. need to hear a double. Gotcha. And you can just we could see like the people like um, uh, chatting. And I think this is what we sent. Okay, okay. I think I get it now. Okay, now it makes more <laughs> sense. Yeah, but we're still learning, man. It's like oh, absolutely. It's like, yeah, it's like the first time we had that like, collaboration. Remember that, man? Oh, How funny that yeah. was. 
if any of you remember when we uploaded the um the video about uh old english together that actually took us hours it's i mean it's about 20 minutes but you know it took us ages to figure out getting skype right getting the volume right you know then suddenly i was too loud you could hardly hear kevin so you know, yeah, yeah, know. it it's took just... us ages because we're not the most talented oh, technology that's right. Now, so. that's, that's right the whole obstacle and it's funny like even after all that like it, it, it hilbert took like what five minutes like this pronounced a letter in old english <laughs> yeah you know, i know I'm, I'm a language noob that's just all right Alba. Yeah. come on get it right hilbert anyway i know oh god okay um right oh wow a bunch of you in this okay oh. yeah this is great thanks everyone for coming yeah really it really means a lot i mean we have a lot to talk about um 21 Hello. watching right now oh boy oh dear <laughs> oh wow should we uh start it in about two minutes ish i think then yeah, most right, people right, should have right. seen the notification and uh, we don't yeah, want to right, keep people so, waiting yeah we're sorry and one of you is quite angry with the fact that we're 22 minutes late um we apologize for that. We are quite new to this holy technology, you know. Yeah. Bestowed from our ancestors and all that stuff. And, uh, okay. Absolutely. Oh, it's nice to see some of the uh, popular faces from our comment section, you know, in the live chats. It's really great. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Where's that for your hall? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's that for your hall? Yeah. Right. Oh, oh buddy. Look at that. Oh, wow. I know this is a. Uh... I know some people are, are saying, you know, oh, they just discovered there's a comment section, like it's the best thing ever. But you know, for poor country farmers like me, it's uh, it's magical. Yeah, totally, it's miraculous. Tech heathens. <laughs> yeah, tech heathens. <laughs> oh dear. Some okay. say we never We're left. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh, oh, we're ready to learn. Okay. Well, that's good because uh, yeah, we're just gonna. Uh, Hang on, I posted on my, uh, I'm posted on my Facebook. Um, hang on, let me post on my Twitter then. Uh, hang on. Live. Now. Yeah, I could put it on, but I think most people are gonna see the YouTube notification rather than the yeah, Facebook. Yeah, because yeah, every time you post a video, Hilbert, like it goes on my phone. And so like. Yeah, notification squad. <sighs> yeah, that's right. Okay, one of my one of my friends has told me he lost sound now. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, oh, can everyone else hear the sound? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, try reloading the page. Okay. Um, so, okay. He. So. Okay. Connor. Uh, sorry, not Connor. Uh, yeah. Uh, Callum O'Connor says I got a unification for this sexy shiz. Okay. So I guess he. <sighs> okay. Sounds fine from Alistair Duncan. We're good. We're a okay. Oh, yeah, um, Brit doing sport. Yeah. What What is this chat going to be about? That's a good question. So, um, Kevin, what are we going to be talking about? Well, we're going to talk about a number of things regarding uh, Angles Saxons and you know, in particular, particularly the Angles. And then from the Angles, we'll like to veer off in the historical linguistic part of uh, well, mainly the Frisians and about Frisia and all things regarding that. I would imagine. Yes. Go off topic. Yeah, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, then, you know, stick around because that's what we're going to start talking about. I think right. now is a good time. <laughs> now is definitely a good time. Okay. All right. So, Hilbert, um, okay, I, I need to remove all these distractions. I just want to focus on my notes. And, okay. So, okay, Hilbert. Thing is, I've always been wondering about the Frisians, uh, mm. particularly that you came to England, and uh, it's just that the question on my mind is how Frisian is England? What do you say? Oh, it's it's quite a hard one to answer that because uh, well, I recently did a sort of dissertation about this, which I wrote about the Frisians coming to England. And for those of you who aren't aware, and I do talk about the Frisians quite a lot in some of my videos, um, and they're essentially another Germanic tribe. So the famous ones are obviously the Saxons, the Angles, and the Jutes. Everyone knows those three, oh, if you know yeah. anything about the history. But yeah. we hardly hear about the Frisians. So that was sort of my whole question. And sort That's of good. to say how Frisian is English, uh, or are the English, and what is their influence is quite hard because, of course, we don't really have that many sources from them, so they didn't really write down that much. I mean, 
today if you wanted to find out you would just probably log on to your instagram you know you'd have dudes taking pictures in kent just saying you know pretty chilling in my crib but you know back in the dark ages you don't really get that so it's really hard to determine whether right. someone would have been frisian at all or whether they would have been you know another ethnicity yeah yeah because it's like I a think, much more blurred line yeah i have this book uh, regarding the frisians uh oh it's, it's a pdf of grammar it's called the grammar of the old of you know, uh, frisic language i mean yeah, that's probably mm -hmm. a 19th century term and, and this is a probably. book by uh, adley h cummings h uh, a m and um Interestingly enough, I'm just going to read an excerpt from this, and uh, and it goes, um, Mr. Halbert Halbertsma, uh, that that uh, de fati f uh, fatigable uh, explorer of Frisian antiquities has said that the inhabitants of of the east of England, where its Germanic invaders landed, and especially of Kent, Sussex, and Hampshire, vividly vividly recall to him the Frisians in speech and general characteristics. Uh, the, there are various spots in England uh, where those traces of the Frisian of ancient and modern times, for example, Halifax, which uh, to which many uh, excellent weavers from uh, for whom uh, Friesland uh, formerly abounded migrated, uh, and wh whose uh, homely verse in the following saying, yeah. So it's like it, uh, I'm gonna. Uh, how can I do this? Uh, can I, I'll send this to you in the chat. Uh, okay. Here, and then I'll. And in the live chat, I'll just, I mean, like, it's like throwing a, I don't know, a, like a, throwing a, like, anyway, I'm just going to post it in the in the chat so our friends can, actually, you know what, no, hang on, hang on, maybe we get some visual aid here. Um, hmm, how do we do this? Yeah, but just while you're, like, sorting that out about yeah. the Frisians in the east of England, when I was writing my dissertation, I found, like, quite a lot of funny things that sort of for the east of England, so say Kent, in the Kentish dialect of Old English, and it's long been suspected that Kent was the kingdom of the Jutes, because, well, you have the northeastern coast, Northumbria, uh, East Anglia, Mercia, that's where the Angles came. Well, it's obvious, yeah. you know, East Anglia, you know, they spoke Anglian. The Northumbrian monk Bede was very proud of being Anglian, and he didn't really like the people of Wessex, who the West Sacks were the West Saxons. So the Saxons went there. But yeah. for the Jutes, they went, I think, to the Isle of Wight as well, if I'm not mistaken. They had yeah, uh, they, something they there. Yeah. yeah, and the Kingdom of Kent. But in the Kingdom of Kent, we also find things that could possibly be um, linking back to Frisian things. So in the Kentish dialect of Old English, you have a lot of similar terms. So for example, um, terms for uh, plots of land. So say now we use uh, acre or mile or um, you know arable land, things like that. Yeah. Those kind of words in the Kentish Old English dialect um, are very similar to words used at the same time in Frisia. And if you think yeah. about it, the Netherlands, the area of Frisia, that's just across the sea from Kent. So it, or it's also logical yeah. that there would be contact there. Interestingly enough, you say acre, right? And the old English word for acre is actually uh, acer, and acer, mm. and the uh, old Frisian cognate is uh, uh, eker. I mean, you know, and there's that similarity, you know, how close the languages are. You know? Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just fascinating the 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 uh, the how close old Frisian and old English are. Like, cause thing is, for example. Um, in Old Frisian, the word for it is is the same as it is in Old English. It's, it's yeah. both hit, mm. you know. So like, um, and uh, a lot of the words are very similar. And like, the funny thing is with Old Frisian, and not many people know this, but like some of the words like look exactly like modern English. Like for example, yeah. the word for other in Old Frisian is like oder, but it's spelled O T H E R. Like as yeah. in modern English, but like, but in old English, you use uh, thorn or, or uh, eth. For those of you who don't know, um, thorn is that um, character that looks like a like a P with a line, and then you have Seems the like eth, eth, and eth is the um, what's it called? Uh, eth is the one that looks like a like a circle with a. Uh, that's called? a thorn, by the way. I've just typed in the live chat. Yeah, there. He, yeah. So Hilbert um, typed in the thorn, and I will type in eth. So, so you got so the audience knows what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. 
So basically, um, in a lot of old languages, sorry to cut you off there, Kevin. No, no problem. But uh, with a lot of the old languages, and it's starting to disappear, you still have it in English, and you still have it in Icelandic. If uh, Stefan is still watching, he'll, uh, I'm sure he'll agree with me, that you have, um, oh yeah, Happy Liberation Day as well, actually. Good point, good point. But um, as I was saying, a lot um, of the older languages have a lot more sounds for the th. Because if you think about it, the th in both isn't the same as the th in cloth, because some of them are voiced and some of them aren't voiced. And now in English, when you have the th, that generally would have been the thorn, whereas in Dutch, these words generally begin with a d. So in oh, yeah. Iceland, you have the al thing yes. with the thorn, and then in English, you have the thing, and in Dutch, you have ding. So it's kind of yeah. interesting to see the, the similarity well, there. There's a reason for that, Albert, because what happened it was the uh, high continent, high uh, Ger high German consonant shift, and so in the continent, in, sorry, in England, uh, thu um, or thu, depending. Well, even then, even the pronunciation of, of the th uh, differs uh, among dialects. Like, for example, West Saxon, it's a voiced th with so a z sound, so thu. Mm -hmm. Um, and whereas the Anglian dialects, and the, um, what are Anglian dialects? They are the um, Northumbrian and Mercian. So they, they have the unvoiced with a th sound. So yeah. anyway, um, so in the continent, sorry, sorry, with England, so thu evolved to Middle English thou into early early modern English, aka Shakespeare's English thou. Whereas on the continent, uh, it 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 depended. Um, I know in Old High German, the um, the 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 initial th is um, is voiced. So then can. You know, yeah. which evolved into Denkan. And so Zu became Du. Like, for example, in yeah. uh, German, Du hast. In um, uh, Shakespeare's English, thou hast. You know, yeah. like nobody think of, thinks, of the, thinks of that, like, like connection. Like, wow, that, they're actually very similar. Yeah. Um, and you can see the similarities between the languages even today, because if there are any Frisian speakers watching, you know, the word for you is do. And in German, it's du. And then in Dutch, it has gone to uh, ye and ye, which is then from another line, from the same line as you in English. But if yeah. you think about it, you, ye, if you then put thu for Old English, and then do, Frisian, do, yeah. German, you can see yeah. how it's all related. Just, you're right. And I just want to point out that, um, you know, the difference between thu, uh, well, you know, thou, even in modern uh, modern English, like thou and you, and you, the difference between them, is that you become comes from old English ye, yeah, and ye yeah was a plural now. Just as uh, it, yeah, that's right. I uh, see. We did have the two U's, like in modern German, modern French, you know. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was much more complex. Um, but I just want to speaking of Frisian, uh, I just want to go back to that uh, in relation to uh, the example from Halifax. You know, with you know from, from the book I'm on the, well, I was reading from. Yeah. And and the, and the phrase was. I'm trying to read this as best as I can, and it's like it's it's good bread, uh, hotter and cheese, is good Halifax and good freeze. Yeah. Oh it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, so, so it's, yeah, go on. Yeah. So I th it's quite a lot like um, the old Frisian saying, which is "butter bre and green cheese." We don't need sizzikin is gien oberocht freeze, which basically means the thing, but. Uh, bread and green cheese. He who can't say that isn't a real Frisian. So you can see like. Again, when you were reading it, I was just thinking that is, you know, it, I could understand that not from English but from Frisian. Yeah, because yeah, because you were telling me, you know, before that, you know, we went live of the origin of that. Well, actually, why, why don't you enlighten us about the origin of that the phrase itself? Well, the, it's whether this is true or not, but tradition has it that this phrase comes from the period when the Frisians were fighting against the Dutch. So against the Hollanders, basically from, uh, you know, the provinces of Holland back in that time, it was, I believe the county of Holland, the, the, the Hollandic people had a count and they fought with the Frisians from uh, Frisia. And I think, yeah, in Frisian, um, he was, I think it's 16th century. He was the leader of basically this small armed band of Frisians. He was essentially the Frisian Braveheart. You can sort of see him in that kind of light, except he didn't cover his face blue and, you know, all that kind of jazz. But he, um, he also had a massive sword, actually, a bit like the claymore that Braveheart used. But the whole thing with him was that people would then join his band, but then to see 
how um, if they were Dutch or not, if they were a spy, he would make them say this sentence because they had sounds in them that Dutch or Hollandic Dutch people couldn't pronounce because they couldn't speak Frisian. So if they then couldn't pronounce Buterbre and Greener Cheese, then they weren't an Obreochte Fries, they weren't a real Frisian. So he'd kill them because he'd know they would be a spy because only Frisians were allowed to join his group. Now, of course, in the, the modern age with quotas and things, he wouldn't be allowed to do that. But, you know, that, that's where the tradition, that's what the legend says about where this sort of, um, I don't know how you would call it, maybe uh, in Dutch the word is gezegde. So it's saying, there we go, saying in English. Yeah, the saying or, or proverb, you know, would be another uh, way to say yeah, it. Yeah, proverb, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Proverb, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's fascinating how, how, like, words and, you know, they have origins of their own. I'll give you an example with the word earth. You know, uh, oh, the word earth comes from the old English word er, earth. Or Ertha, mm. and 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 it's it's a feminine noun, hence that age-old concept of Mother Earth. Mm. You, know? you know, it's uh, it's fascinating how really language is intertwined with mythology and, and the way people thought and whatnot. Um, you know, I mean, that, that, oh, pardon me, that was just uh, shit. anyway. Um, another thing I want to bring up is that you know, Old English comes from something called uh, Old English and Old Frisian. Both come from something called Anglo Frisian. And so, so Frisian and English are very intertwined, very, very much related. Um, and, you know, what, I, what I've always wondered, you know, through my research of like uh, old languages and whatnot, of continental Angle, or if you were continental Anglian, um, if there are any vestiges or any surviving words or anything that come from the angles because because according to our our our, our, our pal bead the all the angles left uh anglin and where is anglin anglin is um uh, is a district in northern germany southern Denmark. well it's in well technically in germany but yeah that's where supposedly all the angles came from and it's called anglin uh purposely because the the, the peninsula by it, it looks like a hook hence ung hence uh, the, you know, hence, you know, the word today for a fisherman is a, an angler, you know, or like the word looking, well, I mean, in order to understand all this, you have to look at it, look at it from the right angle. <laughs> oh, God, no. That was, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was tragic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, let's have a good sound. Oh, uh, um, stop horsing around. But... but, um, on a serious note, um, I would like to bring out, bring on the forefront um, my theory of maybe you can find vestiges or maybe hidden things about the angles. If 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 it survived on the continent, my guess, my my educated guesses on this would be that you might find it in northern Frisian dialects. You might find it through northern Low German uh, dialects. Uh, you might find it from uh, a. a and a uh, dialect from Danish, uh, it died uh, ex extinct in like the 18th century, and this mm. is called Angle Dansk. You know, actually, uh, hang on, let me um, uh, look up right now. Uh, well, I can Angle. Yeah, just while you're doing that, shall I put it into like a bit of a like a broader context, maybe? Yeah, sure, go ahead. So I think what um, Kevin and I are trying to do here is to find out what the language of the Angles would have been. So we all know that the Angles, the Jutes and the Saxons and possibly the Frisians as well came to England. And we all know that their languages sort of molded together. Now, whether they were languages or dialects, we're not too sure because the distinction is blurred. But these dialects, whatever they spoke, molded together and formed Old English, which is the language that Kevin features on his channel. So if you're interested in that, I highly recommend you go and check out his channel because he is constantly teaching Old English. He's teaching, you know, poems and he makes music about it. He teaches how to do the grammar. He teaches words. He has conversations and stuff. That's so he's right. really bringing it back to life. And I know a lot of you guys will be interested in stuff like that because okay. you ask me things in the comments as well. But what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find out what they would have been before they were molded into Old English. So That's what right. would Saxon be like? What would Jewish be like? You know, and with Angli Anglian, and you know, I don't mean like the church, I mean the you know the right, Angles. Right. Yes, the Angles. We, yeah. we want to find out what that would have sounded like because that can help us understand how much of an influence it had on Old English. But the problem is the Angles, as Kevin was saying, probably most of them 
left for England and the rest were then assimilated with North Frisians, with the Danes who came in later, I think yeah. from Sweden, I'm not sure. So that's kind of what we're having a look at. Yeah, pretty much. You're right. And uh, and as I said before, I mentioned about the uh, Anglian dialects, um, is that uh, Northum- if, if you extract the commonalities between the Northumbria dialect and the Mercian dialect, then you would have what would be theoretically Anglian you know, words, you know, that, that's the closest you can get to it. But I mean, uh, but I mean, I mean, I like to be hopeful and, and maybe you can find, um, uh, you know, other words for it and whatnot in yeah. other places. Um, you know, I'm actually looking at some angled dan- uh, dance uh, right here. And like some of the words, like I'll, I'll just quickly read out. I mean, this is probably a butchered pronunciation, but um, so words for like one through th- one to uh, one to three be uh, uh, yin, to tre, so or tra. I don't know. I mean, so it's kind of similar One, in that two, regard. Three. But yeah, right. I mean, uh, it's, it, it's funny how language um, languages evolve over time. And uh, but the thing is, though, I mean, w- what fascinates me about, especially no- uh, northern n- North Frisian dialects, is that in these, um, in this, in especially the islands, that in the Sol Ring, uh, I think Sol or. Yeah, soul. Yes, yeah. Soul. Uh, the, the word for father, one of the words for father is father. It's F A A uh, F E R. It's not hmm. a T H. It's, it's actually, and it's funny because, you know, you know, uh, you know uh, on the surface, we, we read that, oh, uh, F would have been gone by this time because, well, it would have been long gone by now because of uh, the uh, high consonant shift. How everything went from a TH sound to a, to a, a D sound. Yeah. And uh, then you have, Another word uh, for brother, it's like uh, B R uh, O umlaut uh, with, with F again, E R. So that's another interesting thing. That might be a vestige of uh, maybe this, um, maybe old, uh, maybe Anglian, who knows? But um, Quite possibly, because it's not may- at all like the West Frisian. So uh, yeah. West Frisian father is height. So it doesn't sound like that. Although some dialects have a word that sounds more like height. But then, as Kevin was saying, then the the farfer would probably you know again yeah, Stefan's just saying what it is in Icelandic it's they're all all related but possibly that would be the closest we're going to get to finding out Anglian words. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And uh, I'll just go over some other uh, North Frisian dialects. What for father? What I found interesting uh, in the island uh, Am- Amrum is uh, yeah. Atia, so double A T J. But yeah, oh, yeah. like when I saw that, I thought. Hmm, that looks like a bit like Gothic because the word for father in Gothic is is Atta. So oh, yeah, yeah it, it, so that really boggled my mind. And then in the other um, uh, island, uh, uh, Hal Hal Halik or Halix. Okay, butcher pronunciation. But oh, anyway, no, I think that's um, the island Heligoland, but they speak um, Haligan. I think they call it maybe or some of that. And anyway, the, 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 there's a word for father is Baba and um, or Baba. Uh, which is the same? It just so happens to be like the same as in like old high. One of the fa- one, one of the words for father in old high German is Baba. Yeah. Uh, and uh, funny, the word for sister is the same as it. You know, um, if, in this dialect, and then uh, I think so in uh, in uh, what's it called? Um, uh, old high German. I could be wrong in that, but like Soster, the S O S S O S T E R. Um, as for other places, um, you have Sult, uh, or, or Silt, I don't know how to pronounce it, but then you have Folder, you have Var, and then the mainland you have, I think, Teta. Because the oh, thing yeah. is, with, with Northern Frisian dialects, a lot of it is influenced by Danish and, and, and German uh, tourists, and a bit of English tourists as well. And, and that ha- has done like a, a densely... Oh, I, 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 I forgot. I, I, Apologize, I just I just forgot something. Um, there is another dialect, a North Frisian dialect that has the uh, the, the thorn. So not thorn, sorry, F symbol. Uh, it is southern. Uh, I can't pronounce this. Hua, uh, uh, Frisian, and that um, has like F A with a little circle above it. I mean, uh, I, 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 the name escapes me right now. Well, anyway, you have two of those. Then it's F and ER, so like it, it mm. makes me wonder. Maybe angle is still angling is still. I don't know. Um, so it goes to show that 
that these dialects are worth preserving because they are remnants of what was long before. And, and this is very key because there are some dialects in Frisian, or especially North Frisian or East Frisian, have died out mm -hmm. or that are extinct. And we have one in particular called the um, Vangaruga Frisian. And so, uh, so Hilbert, take a guess of when that language, uh, that dialect died out or language. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm tempted to say uh, it might be the one that I read about because I know one of these dialects died out in the 19th century when there was a flood because it was literally just, you know, uh, about 100 people on the island speaking it. And then this flood came and they all drowned and the whole dialect was lost. But I'm not sure if that was that one. Maybe. No. Uh, well, well, the one, well, in the case of Vangarugam, the last speaker died in 1953. Wow. I mean, and that's not you know that's 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 fairly recent you know yeah and and like you know i mean but like all hope is not lost i mean i i'm kind of, i'm especially in regards to linguistics and you know finding more about the pagan past and all this stuff i mean there's there's a lot of stuff out there like sure you know you can go on databases archive.org you name it and google google books you find all the stuff and but not but think about what isn't on the internet that's what's more fascinating, you know. Yeah. And, and and like I don't know, some of your listeners uh, or viewers, you know, they can live in some of these places and they can look in their old attic and go, oh, what's this, you know? And then you find out, wow, they had this gem in their house that this whole time it never been digitized before. Yeah, you know? and speak as well. If like for you younger guys, speak to your grandparents, speak to the elder generation because it's often these guys who have loads of information. If you're in these areas, you know, and even if you're not, I mean. Um, I hate to sound like uh, you know a soppy guy or anything like that, but you know they have a lot of information, and the, the past is closer than you think. I'll just say that you know because they have a lot of things that can really make yeah. you stop and think and wonder. And to be honest, I hate to sound cynical, but when they're gone, the information goes with them. And I think especially yeah. in this age when everything is moving so rapidly, we need to keep that alive. We need to keep these old yeah. things alive, dialects, yeah. languages, and things. They're all going yeah. out the window, and it's a direct route to our past, our languages. Yeah. So I think it's exactly. so important to keep them alive, to yeah. listen to the people who had them, to catalog them, to document things like that. Well, even in California, um, in California, I think that was one of the most linguistically populated and diverse areas on the planet for centuries. And then the last 200 years, um, like, they've pretty much all died out, like all of these Native American tribes. And when I'm saying a tribe, you might imagine like thousands of people, but they could have just been like bands of say 20, 30 people. They each had their own dialect or language and now they've all gone. Yeah, and we are now starting to speak more of a multicultural London English, which is a massive shame because in our dialects in, in the north of England as well, we have all these words from our past. We have all these exactly. words that have been influenced by what has and, happened to us in history, and we need to keep it alive, really. Right. i give you a good example. More of my answers are from in, in Yorkshire, um, God's uh, own county. Anyway, enough of that white rose. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, white that, rose, white rose. Right, right. So anyway, um, the thing is, in Yorkshire, you, you still use, they still use a, a word that descends from the word thou, and it's thee and tha, mm. you, know? And, you know, like, and that should be preserved. I mean, if you want to keep your culture, stay who you are. I mean, yeah, you know, you have a lot of people that are just a little ambivalent, you know, like they go through life, oh, I don't really care about my ancestors or whatever, and this, this, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, like you said, Hilbert, like once it's gone, it's gone. You know? Yeah. It's, 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 and another thing too is that it's, um, you know, I mean, as far as language death, I mean, there there, there are many different uh, factors why it happens. I mean, uh, standardization is another factor because thing is, we live in an age now where like uh, uh, we're, we're so conditioned to think that there's only one way to spell one word. Mm. You know, take for example the word love. You know, you only spell it one way, but like no one ever thinks about dialects and how. You know that you know the way people speak in like uh, in um, you know throughout throughout England and throughout uh, Germany. You know they, they 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 you know they they all have a story of their own. You yeah. know, uh, uh, you know. Like, well, just to compare some languages, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, mythology uh, in the Germanic tradition, um, the sun is uh, feminine, whereas in the uh, um, 
Whereas in the, I guess the italic, you know, that's okay. I'll use Rome, for example, uh, where the moon is, is, um, Germanic. Um, yeah, sorry. Demeter, I think, in, uh, is the goddess of the moon, isn't she? In the, of the goddess of the moon and the hunt, I think. Demeter, something I like think. That. Yeah. Demeter. Was, was it yeah, like? something like that. Uh, that excites me right now. But, um, um, but just going back to, um, minority languages, uh, preserve what you can. It's very important. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I can't, I cannot stress that enough. I mean, everyone can make a difference in this world. I, I guarantee it. When I did my video on like, um, what's it called? Uh, old English and, and by Miseris. I mean, and, and for those of you who don't know, what is Vimeseris? It, it is a Germanic language in southern Poland. There are literally 50 people that speak this language, and they're all old. Well, most of them are old. All right? Is it a German? It's a high German uh, dialect. Well, dialect slash language, however you want to debate it. But, yeah, it, it, it's, it's – I mean, it could have, you know, like some old – you know, there could be some old fairy tale book that's been passed down generation to generation that could reveal more of, like, the old sagas and whatnot. I mean, you have uh, recently they've been translated to English the the sagas, sorry, sagas of Veliva, Eastern <laughs> Netherlands that do mention Thor and do mention the giants and whatnot. Like, wow! I mean, it's out there, but like that's right. You're so right, uh, Hilbert, that the, the past is much closer to us than we than we actually think. And, yeah. and I do think that a lot of it is right under our feet, and we just don't know yet. Absolutely, and I just I just want to make a correction there. Thanks everyone who pointed that out. The um the moon goddess in the Roman tradition is Diana, not Demeter. So that's okay. Okay, clarify well, that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 Okay. Um. Uh. I just want to, and uh, for those of you who are kind of pumped up and whatnot about like, if you want to, if if language preservation. Uh, uh, somehow interests you, you know, uh, through us talking about it. There is something you can, guys can check out. It's on something called Discord. It, it's a chat site thing, Discord. Um, there is a group there called um, uh, United Nations uh, for Ancient and Endangered Languages. I mean, I, I, I've, I, I'm, I'm part of this, so you might see me there. Uh, it, like, everyone there is really nice. And you got a wide variety of people. Some people do um, Sumerian. There's a guy there that does Sumerian. There's a guy that does uh, Vimezers or Vilamovian that, as a language I spoke about earlier. So, so yeah, there are young people um, uh, that are into, you know, language revival and, you know, trying to help out and whatnot. I mean, it's great because cause that's what these people need. You know, to show that there's a whole world out there that's interested in them. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's just, I, I truly believe we can, we can make a difference and, and because life is only as good as we make it and we can inspire people like Hilbert, you've inspired, I would imagine a great, a great sum of people with your videos and I have with, with my videos regarding, you know, languages and whatnot. So, well, I hope so. And you know, the thing is, yeah. People, and this is historic as well, people were often seen if you spoke with a dialect or spoke in your own language. With Frisian, this is the case. With the Gaelic languages in England, uh, Occitan in France, you know, um, everywhere. If you spoke with a, in a dialect or with an accent, you were looked down upon by, the, you know, the, the ruling people and, and things yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, um, Kevin, that's a good point. Do you want to maybe post the Discord link in the chat so that people can find it? Oh, yeah, sure thing, sure thing. Um, yeah, just, well, um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll post point. it. Well, the chat with you or the chat with with the, with the um, just in in the live chat, so the so the um the subscribers okay. can get on. I think yeah, okay, all right, so scribblers. Yeah. What? Uh -oh. <laughs> well, you know the viewers. It says sorry. But, um, uh, remove any address. Try again. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, okay. I'll definitely what... post it in the uh, description of the video. So don't worry, we'll we'll get it posted at some point. But yeah, as I was yeah, saying, that... you know, be proud of your accent. Be proud of your dialect. It's something to be yeah. proud of. Because oh, if yeah. you just speak standard, you know, London, quote unquote, English, you know, how boring is that? You, you want to have a dialect. You want to have kind of, you know, kind of this posh, you know, very, you know, exquisite, quite, you know, up here and look people down there, you know, sort of kind of, I mean, at this point, I mean, that posh, I mean, some people get picked on for it. But then again, we have to remind ourselves of something that the reason why a lot of people go to London and, you know, they, they pick up that accent, if you will, because because. It's for economic reasons. That's something we have to bear in mind. You know, just as United States, you know, if, I, I mean, this is a generalization here. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But if you want to get uh, anywhere in Hollywood, uh, speaking people regularly, you, I don't think you're going to get very... F I shouldn't say that. I don't know. Well, 
what what I'm getting at here is that if you sound like the was like generally accepted, you know, um, you could think you kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Because the thing is, if you have some from like Dixie South, and uh, you know, you try to you know try to get into Hollywood or whatever. I don't know. I mean. Who knows? Or compared to someone from New England, you know, there's a big uh, uh, accent difference, a uh, dialect difference mm-hmm. there. Or, or someone from like a heavy, broad Yorkshire accent, you know, trying to get into, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it really it depends. But it's sad though that people, or not only that, it, there's the economic thing. Then there's the fashionable factor as well. It's cool, the mm-hmm. sound posh. It's cool, the sound American. Or it's cool, you know, the sound, you know, the use words like basic or based, you know, oh, and all this. God, it really annoys me in the Netherlands as well, because like yeah. the teenagers there, so like my family members in the Netherlands, uh, yeah. when they learn English, you know, they, they, they're like, I'm going to learn to speak English with an American accent. So then they have A with their Dutch accent and then B trying to do an American accent while they speak English. And I'm just as like a Dutch British man who grew up in Britain. I'm like, oh, no, just just don't. It just it doesn't sound. But yeah just be proud of your accents guys speak them with pride speak your minority languages if you know them with pride because yes, like yes. too long it's been that people have been ashamed of it and yeah. made to feel ashamed but it's yeah. something really cool i mean yeah. when someone learns another language like french you know everyone's like wow that's so clever but then if you can speak a minority language as well as the general language of the country that's brilliant. That is that absolutely great. Cooler, it's special man. as well. Exactly. It's yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's if you're gonna take anything away from this. I know this has been getting quite, you know, softy with us going inspirational and deep and but you know, at the end of the day, be proud, you know. Yeah, be very proud. I mean, like respect your roots, you know, just you know, know that your ancestors are looking from above, you know, wherever they are. And uh, uh, have a qu- um, there's a question here. Can somebody tell me the name of that group, please? Okay. Um, that is Julia Feltz. Okay. Um, the name of that group is United Nations. Okay. Pretty good. Uh, type it in the yeah. chat. Right. I think I did it before, but the thing is, it's like, a, it's, it's like a river. It's like a stream. It keeps on going, going, going. Because, you know, <laughs> Which is great. Themselves. I know, right? Okay. So it's called United Nations. Uh, Nations. All of- for... Uh, ancient and endangered languages. And this is on a thing called Discord. And Discord is a program you have to download. I, I think there's a web browser version of it. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, we both typed it in. Or maybe you just copy <laughs> and paste it, Hilbert. No, no, no. I, cof- I uh, typed it oh, in. Oh, okay, cool. Right. Um, right. Kevin, this is maybe one more for you. I know Thomas has addressed it to me, but you're a lot more learned on Old English than I. Um, oh, and he's saying, um, would you say Old English words from the Saxon regions are dead? Uh, so the, the Saxon ones, I guess, then. No, no. Actually, uh, no. I mean, even within... Uh, uh, you know, no, I think it's still around, but it's harder to find. I think maybe in rural areas you might find it. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, there's, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, there is a place in England that I think it's in the south where they do say cham, like as an I am. Okay. And I think that's a remnant of like, um, like it's, it's am or it's am, you know? Mm. Oh, hello, Sarah. Welcome to the chat. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway. Um, oh boy, we're getting a lot of people. So would you perhaps then look for um, yeah. Saxon remnants of Old English and Modern English in places like the West Country, so maybe Somerset, more rural possibly, areas? Possibly, possibly. Mm. You can also look for uh, re- really remnants in what's it called? Um, uh, black Country. And there, like, they, they, the way it's been said that the way the people that, the people that speak there, apparently. Uh, they have remnants of like early modern English or even further back, you know. Um, oh, wait, I've seen people use the word Ken. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, so uh, the 50, the 505 guy, um, uh, guys says, yeah, the word Ken, yeah, that it's mostly used as a verb, like I can you. That's an older way of saying I know you, and it's that the comes same from in Dutch, yeah, yeah, it, it comes from old English, uh, kunnan, to know, but mm. this is not like to know, like with knowledge, just like to know with people. Yeah, yeah. It's like if you know Scottish and um, the Scots language, "adeni ken" means yeah. "I don't know." Like, I d- and then "no" yeah. is like um, I'm trying to think of a Spanish word now because that's comparable. It's like when you like knowing a person rather than knowing a fact. If that makes sense. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's um, yeah, and in French you have that too. Yeah, yeah same in French. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, right. um, in Dutch, if there are any Dutch speakers, um, ik ken een man die melk verkoopt. I know a man who sells milk. Ik weet yeah. dat 2 plus 2 4 is. And I can yeah. do maths today for some reason, which means uh, I know that 2 plus 2 is 4. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, people are, you know, typing Dutch in the chat as well. So that's, that's sort of, and it's really yeah. interesting how that, you know, you find it in Scots, you find it in Old English, there's a similar word to Ken, you isn't what, there? Speaking of Scots, you know, the thing is what's, you know, I mean, like, I find with, I I I want I wonder too how Frisian is Scots as well. Well, then again, think thing is the Germanic tribes from the old tribes were um, what's it called? They were Angles, yeah. Mm. From from and because Scots comes from the old um, uh, comes from the Northumbrian dialect of Old English. So yeah. you have like what was like in in uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, West Frisian, like Vettel, you know that L. Mm. You know, yeah. like you know, you, you kind of have that sound in, in Scots. Like uh, I can't think of a word right now, but um, hang on, hey, we got a question. Yeah, you, you, do, you do find things like as well. Um, yeah. in in Scots, the word for two is twa or twa. So if you say there's a very old oh, yeah. uh, folk song which is called Twa Corbys, and it's about yeah. two ravens, it's a very haunting folk song. If you want to listen to it afterwards, but in Frisian, the word for two is twa as well. So you see like in, uh, oh, things oh, like that. Oh there's something I really want to tell you. Um, uh, it's a, that what's it called? What's it called? Uh, Satterland Frisian. Satterland Frisian. Yeah. It's in Germany, and it's mm. a beautiful language of Frisian. Why? Because it looks a lot like English. I, I'm serious, man. Like the word yeah. for old is literally O O L D. Yeah, it's you know because for those of you who don't know, I'm currently working on a video about Frisian and where it's spoken because there are a few different dialects of Frisian now. And Saterland is like a little enclave. It's very small now, unfortunately. Very yeah, few speakers yeah. in Germany where they still speak uh, Frisian. Um, someone's asking for us to post the Discord uh, link or the I, code. I, I tried. I think they it wouldn't let me because. Uh, Probably say like this is spam or something, but uh, but I think we'll have okay. it in the, in the description below or something. But don't worry, you yeah. will get it one way or another. Um, yeah. Someone... So I think what we'll do is if you can hold on until like the streams ended, then we'll post it in the description. So then have a look in the description because we will post it. But you yeah, know, yeah. This question, Jeremy, want to answer? Uh, hang on. Um, but Swedish. Okay, I'll, I'll talk a bit about Swedish. Okay, what is Swedish? We, Swedish. Um, it's from the, it comes from old, well, old Swedish, the further back you go to runic Swedish, AKA, um, old East Norse. Yeah. Cause thing is the, the problem with language labeling is that when we think of old Swedish or old Danish or old English, a lot of people tend to think, or even old Frisian, they think, think, oh, it has old. So it must be around the same period. No, no, no. When we, when we think of like old Swedish or old Danish in particular, this is like, we're thinking like 1200s or maybe 1100. Or th yeah, around that range. Yeah, so that's something we have to bear in mind. Um, yeah, so like not all old languages that are called old this are from the same period. So, um, yeah. you know, old Norse, old English, slightly different periods. But if you look at old Frisian, then it's the term used for Frisian language yeah. texts, which are found from like the ninth century right the way through to, I think, the 16th yeah. century. So obviously yeah. it's going to be, you know, quite diverse. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have another question here. Do Scots uh, have Scandinavian? Yes, uh, Scots does have like the words like efter, you know, like for after. Uh, e F T E R is the same as it is in Danish, and I think in Swedish as well. It's the same spelling. Yeah, I um, think they will have some Scandinavian, but if yeah, I'm not of course, mistaken, yeah, the Norwegians came in there. Yeah, yeah, of course they do. I mean, look at Shetland, you know. Mm, no, now. I don't think so because what? the Scots. No, no, no. Yeah, hear me out. Hear me out. Scottish, yes. But Scots was only really spoken in this period in the lowlands of Scotland. It later oh, moved up into like Aberdeen. But Shetland yeah. and Orkney were traditionally um, either Brythonic Pictish speaking or Gaelic speaking. Yeah. So I'm that. not sure if like that, you know, but if they were in, there. But it in, definitely does have some influence. Yeah. But the language in like when the when the Norse people I don't like using the word Viking to be frank. Uh, anyway, so when the Norse people came into like the British Isles, they came to Orkney, they came to Shetland, but like they didn't. What and their language that was around then was called Norn. Yeah, not many mm. people know about it, and it somewhat lives. Through, but thing is, ever since the Scottish occupation of uh, of these islands, um, of Orkney, Shetland, and the others, uh, you know, it, it uh, like you have very little of it. You may have a few poems mm -hmm. here and there. I mean, I know you have like the uh, Lord's Prayer, if anything. Yeah. 
Yeah. But um, I think know, Norn was so. still spoken until fairly recently. I think 18th century, but then it was replaced so, re- replaced by Scots, yeah. um, because Scots yeah. sort of generally moved up, sort of Aberdeenshire. Uh, the Highlands remained pretty Gallic until fairly recent times after the Jacobite risings. But Scotland is just yeah. oh, it's a, it's also a very interesting linguistic area to uh, to study. Yeah, uh, we have a question here. Where does Spanish come from? Oh boy. Oh dear. I'm gonna take a quick break for about two to three minutes, and then I'll hop right back on. But you know, you can just uh, continue. What am I supposed to answer this alone? Is is this what it is? You're abandoning uh, me? No, no, no. <laughs> I'll come back. You can skip the question because I know sort of where Spanish comes from. But yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, we'll, we'll hold. We'll put that question on hold, and we'll 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 put this whole thing on hold. Okay, Hilbert. Yeah. Um, quick two minute break. Quick drink, and then uh, I'll hop right back. Yeah. Intermission, everyone. <laughs> Intermission. <laughs> hold your horses, and stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. So we have 33 people watching. Um, I would just like to say, um, all of you, thank you for coming. I mean, uh, I mean, we're we're obviously going to talk some more when Hilbert gets back, I and mean, you know, so uh, it really means a lot. And yeah, I mean, uh, well, we try to educate, uh, you know, because. Her word with his history and me with languages. Um, for those of you who don't know, I uh, I don't just do old English. I mean, I'm known for old English, but I also have another channel called uh, Learning Old Germanic Languages. So, like, I do Old Saxon, Old High German, Old Swedish, Old Danish, you name it. Anything old, I do it. No, because... Uh, yeah, uh, yes, it will, be, it will be posted soon. Um... Yeah, that's what Hilbert told me. So, um, okay. To be honest, I'm listening to. Okay, that's cool, man. That's cool. Um, uh, um, so many questions. Oh my! <laughs> I've always wanted to ask uh, so my name is Henning. Okay, I'll, qu- I'll quickly. Um, uh oh boy okay uh well hang on well henning i mean i don't know like my my guess off that would be like maybe from a tribe maybe called the the henning goss people i don't know i mean i i, I mean i i tried looking your name uh i tried to look up henning in my old english dictionary not too long ago but uh um, um i'll have to get back to you on that one um okay uh Oh no, we're not. No, I, I'm in Canada. Yeah, Hilbert's in. He's in Angleland. He's in the motherland. Um, right. Uh, what did the Carolingians and Merovingians speak? I think, if my history is correct, they spoke. Um, I would imagine. Well, depending on what class of people we're talking about. I mean, I would think maybe uh, Frankish or something like that. Yeah, well, the thing is, Old Franconian, okay, th- there's a difference here. Um, there's a bit of debate about that. Um, uh, because uh, when people, because th- because there is a grammar book called Old Franconian or Old, I mean, it, well, I mean, you re- re- read it, it says Old Frankish, but it's really Old Franconian. And when we say, when you, and what, what is Old Franconian? It's really Old High German, but the Franconian dialects. Um, um, can I just dive in? Oh, you, oh, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I, uh, yeah, I came back. Just someone's been asking a question a lot, and I haven't quite picked up on it yet. But um, let me see if I can just find it. Uh, somebody in the month. I know it's great. I'm loving this. Um, what is again? I think someone's yeah, asking. Really this is our me. first time, man. Yeah, it's brilliant. I think I'm thinking we should do this more often. I agree. I agree. Someone was asking where his name come name came from. Yeah, the from. Henning fellow. Uh, Henning. Well, but Sarah, Sarah said here it comes from um, Johannes, Johannes und Heinrich. Heinrich. 
Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you know, because I know that uh, a lot of the time uh, with uh, Old Norse, Old English, when you have an ing, it sort of represents sort of of the people. So yeah, I know right. one of the names for a Frisian king was Finn Folkvalding, which meant Finn of the people. Or you have uh, the horse singers, I think, in Kent, the descendants of Horsa, I think. Yeah. Also in England, you have a place called um, Reading. Oh, excuse mm. me, because uh, because it comes from a tribe called the Readingas uh, 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 people. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, right. So I mean, so sorry, you're going there. Oh no, no, you go. Well, no, it's just like it's funny because like people read that thing. Oh, I'm going to reading. No, it's reading. <laughs> no, it's reading. You know, it's anyway. I don't know. But, I mean, if uh, someone had asked me for that, I would have thought it would have meant sort of the red thing, as in the the thing where the uh, the men would meet and discuss matters of the tribe. You know, the the rare, like from um, oh. Frisian, like a uh, rare cliff. But you know, it's yeah. Because thing it's yeah, the... that's interesting. Because you no, know, the rare part. Because thing is, in old English, we have a redan. And that means um, not only to read, but it also means to counsel. Like it's a really old, old word. Like yeah, uh, like an Alfred. That's the same ending, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's right. Or, or Alfred. You know, it means mm. like uh, knowledge, uh, uh, counsel, and uh, stuff like that. And yeah, it means like in Shakespeare's English, you, you have H. You know, sorry, not H. I mean, that's um <laughs> Too you have I read, I read the. You know, I read the. You know, and uh, I counsel it, it's, you. Yeah, I counsel you, you know, but yeah, we don't speak that. Well, I mean, there might be some, uh, maybe some archaic dialect in England around today that might use it. Who knows? Well, but, uh, yeah, it might not be in English, but in Dutch, uh, rat is, yeah. um, you know, when you give someone counsel. And Stefan, for you, I think in Iceland, the um, police stations are called Dratus, which then also comes from, I'm sorry if I butchered that pronunciation, by the way, but I think that also comes from the same root of the, the rad in English and then the uh, rat in, uh, I think, the Scandinavian languages and yeah, rat well, in Dutch. It is. Yeah, it's, it's all, it's cool how it's all like the variants of the same word, you know, mm. red, uh, mm, yeah, um, a lot of questions here. We, we have a question before you left, it was like- About Spanish. Quickly. Yeah, about Spanish, the origin of Spanish. Right. Um, Right. Okay. Um, I have a very scant knowledge of where Spanish comes from. It, I think it comes from vulgar Latin, but mm. there are some Germanic um, uh, words in it, like words like um, Eduardo, Alfredo. Mm. These are Germanic words, and why we have Germanicisms uh, in Spanish because of the the noble people called the Visigoths. You know. The, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they were so sort of the first ones, like the Germanic ones, to come into Spain before the Moors invaded, and then they later on the ones in the north in um, uh, Asturias. They were the ones who fought back, uh, started off the Reconquista, which then ended in um, I think 1492, the fall of Granada. Although I'm not sure if that's the correct date for the fall of Granada. Something like that. But um, the thing is, even a word um, in Spanish, I think the word for guard. I don't know what it is, but like that comes from what's it called? Uh, it comes from Gothic, like okay, yeah, uh, yeah. God, I don't know. I think um, Garda, which is interesting because the police in Ireland are also called the Garda. Um, I yeah, think God. that would be the word for God in Spanish. I'm not sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, uh, but where does it come from, the Spanish? Then, because I think that was sort of. Um, the thing yeah. but yeah i think you're right kevin that it, definitely from latin you can see yeah, a lot of crossover latin, with yeah. french with um italian things like that um where it's different is you have an arabic influence that french doesn't really have italian doesn't really have so if you're saying i'm going to the market you say boy al mercado and al is like in uh, in Arabic, it's that's a direct Arabic influence. So the kingdom in the south, which the Muslims conquered, the Moors, is called Al Andaluz, and of course now in Spanish it's called Andalusia. So that Al part is an Arabic influence, and you've also got other Arabic words that uh, snuck into Spanish, changed it. Um, not many Celtic words, not many Celtic yeah. words made it into Spanish, um, yeah. right? Which is interesting, but I think yeah. that's sort of roughly how. Spanish you think formed. you think so, right? Because the Celts, you know, long before the Romans were there, like they were like the dominant you know, tr among the Celtic tribes there. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, you have so, the yeah, Celto Iberians I mean, in Spain. Yeah. So oh, okay, Julia's from uh, Andalusia. Yeah. I think, hola. Okay. Um, we have a question here. Where um, 
Eduardo comes from, and then she says, wealthy guardian. Well, yeah, because thing is, a Eduard is the mm. old English. Because the thing is, a lot of uh, Germanic names, they're really compound words. Mm. Um, you know, like Edward's a great example because you have Ead, which means wealth, you know. Um, mm. Or if you say someone who's happy in old English, you say, say hey, is Ead. He, he is prosperous. He's wealthy. He's happy. Uh, yeah. So, uh, um, and uh, and then ward is the origin of ward. You know, yeah. a guardian. You know, like a jail warden, um, a traffic ward. Uh, you know, you know, um, I put a ward up in in like Skyrim or something. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and of um, course, you have the best compound name of all, Hilbert. You know, no bias here at all. Oh, oh right, right. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you have the Bert part. You have, I mean, this is a Frisian example of uh, a name Hilbert, but yeah, you yeah. obviously have it in. <laughs> I got to put the rolling R in, but uh, it, in Old English you have the Bert part as well, the Hild. Um, so I think Hild itself was a name in Old English. I know in the Last Kingdom, yeah, the is called Hild. Hild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's actually a feminine name. Actually, you got you got names like Hilda. You know, actually, yeah. one of my ancestors was called uh, Hilda. Yeah. Oh, really? Because yeah. um, Hilbert is actually the masculine version of the feminine name Hildebert. So then the de, the Hild part is a, a feminine, which is interesting because Hild meant something like battle. And then Bert yeah, hang on. meant bright, mm -hmm. so like Egbert. You know, that yeah, yeah, mean, actually yeah. Word in Old English, you're right. Um, in, in Old English, um, it's a poetic word, Hild, which does mean war. It does mean battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like in, found in hilt of a sword. Maybe that's, you know. Maybe there's there. some connection there. And uh, yeah. You, yeah, you got a lot of names that have this too, like, um, yeah, Hild a bit. Um, no, wait, hang on. Uh, Hilda, yeah, Hilda this, Hilda that. Um, Hilda Bird. You know. oh, from the, what's it called? I think Deor, it's called. Yeah, the poem Deor. Um, oh, yeah. Mado Hilda. Beautiful yeah, it's a character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, some, oh no, yeah, carry on. No, no, no carry on. No. No, I, was I was just gonna, gonna say topic, that but... <laughs> I was just gonna say that you know, my favorite poem reading old English is Day Odd, because it's easy mm. to read. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone was asking, um, try hard for the win, was asking how to learn history quickly. Read books. That's read, yeah. I mean, read books. That that's <laughs> one of the best ways to do it. Read books and then read more books. Yeah, well, and also listen to podcasts. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. right. And yeah, that helps a lot too. The old English, very important. Yeah. But what? What? Uh, what? Say again. What? Watch history with Hilbert and uh, learn in the old English. Yeah, that's, that's right. Top you get, way to learn history. That's mm -hmm. right. You get your history fix and you get your linguistic fix. You know. Yeah, right. That's right. And the 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 fun thing is. It's that you can connect our videos. So if you say, uh, watch one of my videos about the Anglo-Saxons and then go and watch one of Kevin's videos, you can make connections between the two because the history and the languages are intertwined completely. Um, yeah, 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 there's overlap, you know, like, because it's one thing to know the history of what happened, but it's another, it's really another when you um, understand the mindset of mm -hmm. these people back then, you know, Absolutely. um and I'll repeat again, you know, the word for earth comes from the old English word earth, which is a, a feminine noun, hence the concept of mother earth. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all interrelated. Um, you know, even our days of the week is very intertwined with, you know, the way people thought. Um, all the gods and the goddesses. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. You know, Monday comes from monandai. So really, literally moon's day. Then you got uh, you got T West Day, so literally T Tuesday, Day, it, like the god Tiu, the god of war, um, just as a cognate with uh, with uh, French Mardi Mars, and mm. and and French uh, Mardi uh, Mardi. Uh, the the suffix of D comes from Latin Dies, which means day. Mm. So yeah, then we have Wednesday. Uh, uh, so it comes from Wardenness Day, Warden. Uh, then it, you know it's a, it's affiliated with Mercury, just as in French, Mercury, Mercury. Yeah. Uh, then we have um, uh, in French we have for Thursday um, we have a Jeudi with Jupiter. Then we have with uh, 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 Thor uh, in, in in the Germanic context of Thunresday. Yeah. It just as in German Donnerstag. You know, and um, and Frisian Tongersdag. So, Donger means thunder. It, it's, it's, quite, all in, it's, right, it's all in thunder in old English as well, didn't it? I think. What, what pardon? Did Thunor mean thunder in old English as well as? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. Because the thing is, we gotta bear in mind these people worshipped, um, they they they, they personified, you know, the natural elements, um, you know, they they, they you know they they kind of, 
you know, uh, and then we have a uh, donor, 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 uh, 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 dach in, um, uh, in, in low German. Mm. What is low German? I know we're kind of veering off because there's so much to talk about. Um, <laughs> low German is, 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 is the northern language of Germany. Um, it descends from old Saxon and, um, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Because yeah, that, we're kind of veering off. Okay. Well, there's so much. So many things. It's kind on. of like if you imagine German, but then more Dutch kind of thing. So yeah, that yeah. and it's a bit more like English too. You know, like yeah. uh, um, how can I say this? Uh, I, I I can't think right now. There's so many words that come to mind. Um, mm -hmm. like it, let's say um, like the word was is is was. Mm. Like that's one of the words. Or like the word for day is dag. You know, yes, it's uh, more like um, yeah, uh, more like Dutch "doch" than German "tag." If that you know, yeah, yeah, because sort of thing, thing is, "doch" uh, sounds more like "day" in English as well. Yeah, because thing is, um, in comparison to Old Saxon, Old uh, English, um, uh, Old Saxon is more, um, uh, it's more guttural. You know, a lot mm. of sounds, a lot of vela fricative G's, or as I like to call it, the Grendel G, because one, it's hard to make, and two, it sounds scary <laughs> to most people. Um, sure that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone was asking um, a little bit before, how do I know what books to read when I'm looking for a certain topic? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, mm. It depends what kind, what, what you're looking for, really. I mean, I mean, as far as finding good history books, I mean, you you you're gonna have to try to use your judgment. I mean, uh, if you're going on Amazon, please read the reviews. Mm. You know, and uh, so you have an idea. Is this really worth my money? Um, but what you can do. Um, you said books, right? But well, here's a yeah, books. Uh, a viable, <laughs> viable option. I mean, let's say you you're interested in a book, go on on uh, Google Books and like check out like what is previewable, so oh, you yeah. so you know what you're getting yourself into before you buy it. And it's I mean, if it ha if it's yeah, and as well, I'd say um, it's hard to find a a bad history book. It's just that sometimes, obviously, when doing research, they might have researched one thing on the topic and not another thing. So no. maybe try and get to get a broader overview. If you really want to learn about the topic, get one or two books, get them from different perspectives and then think what perspective were they writing from? What perspective was this other person writing from? Yeah. And what are my conclusions? What conclusions yeah. would I have drawn? And then and try and find the links, see what they say is both the same, see what they disagree on yeah. and then try and think, why do they disagree? What do I think? That's sort of how you get a broader perspective. Yeah, that's right. And it's always good to be very open minded. And because thing is, a lot of people, you know, they, they go into history thinking, this is what it is, you know, kind of this box set. Okay. Uh, don't question, da, 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 da. And, you know, and then they, you know, then they get hit with facts and facts and facts. And you're like, oh, no, my worldview of this period is now shattered. You know, so it's always good to be open minded and be ready for surprises. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, like, um, well, it was not too long ago. They found like uh, ancient humans or something, skeletons, in like in America or something that really changes our view of yeah. Of, I think of, like, the man or people who came rather than coming over the the Bering Strait that maybe the first peoples in America actually crossed over the North Sea from you know what is now France rather than that, and that sort of completely yeah, altered yeah, our exactly. idea of the Native Americans and stuff. Of course, we, we're still pretty sure the Bering Strait theory is correct, but maybe there were different waves of people coming into America. We have to be open-minded, and we can't get our emotions involved. I mean, because mm. you know, another you know thing too. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people think, as far as um, the Anglo-Saxons, a lot of people think, oh, well, the Anglo-Saxons came and they conquered the hell out of the the the, the uh, uh, Celtic people. Okay, some of that is true. Them all, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, actually, the word Welsh comes from the Old English "wah," which means foreigner or slave. You know, so I mean, there is that linguistic reality. However, um. Uh, um, too many questions. Um, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Must maintain a train of thought. Um, after that, uh, you know, but realistically thinking, you know, they probably intermarried with with the locals there. You know, I'm not. I'm pretty sure not all of them are bloodthirsty. You know, okay, oh, well, yeah. let's go here and kick these uh these these Celtic people out of here. You know, what I mean. I mean, and we also sort of, if we're thinking that the Anglo Saxons managed to kill every Celt and take over, we are really putting them on a massively high pedestal. Like they were pretty cool and they were pretty bloodthirsty, but yeah. genocide is as we tend to think of it, is quite a modern thing. I mean, sure, people killed each other, but why would you kill an entire population when you could just 
take over it. It doesn't really make so much sense. I mean, people who try to argue that the Anglo-Saxons were racist, it's it's, it's pretty bollocks. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's it's No, no. You, you had tribes. Really... You had tribes allying with um, Celtic tribes to fight other Germanic, uh, other Anglo-Saxons, you know, or vice versa. Mm. You had, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's very, uh, very complex. You know, like nothing is ever simple in history or linguistics. No, nothing is ever simple. Um, oh, that's an interesting uh, question. Would you say that the Vikings were the Saxons 2.0? Updated. Hmm. Oh, wow. Well. Okay. Uh, well, the Vikings, I mean, I mean, when we say Vikings, like who are we actually talking about? Are we talking about the Danes or are we talking about the Norwegians? I mean, uh, I think it sort of just means generally the, the, the Norsemen who, you know, came over from scandinavia during sort of the viking age i think that's the well, 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 the, the thing is the thing is with norse words in, in our language uh, especially old english sometimes it's really hard to tell them apart oh Dane. some of them are just Dane. yeah you know some of them are just the same word like give you okay good example the danes you know the word for um for uh i think sun is uh is barn like b-a-r-n uh, uh, in mm -hmm. old danish barn and uh but in old english is barn Mm. which evolved into a bairn in a Scots English. Yeah. yeah so. And then you could also say the thing with like the closeness of languages is that the, often there's so many different places it could have come from, but we just don't know because yeah. um, the bairn kind of thing we find in Frisian as well um, with um, barn, you know, it's also in Frisian. So yeah, yeah. we're not entirely sure where it comes from. It's also in Norwegian. It's in Danish. It's probably in Swedish. I think there'll probably be a word for it in Icelandic as well. So some of these words, uh, it's interesting as well that some words in many languages stay the same. They're sort of very rooted words. I think like mother, father, uh, son, yeah. children, that kind of thing. I think these words often stay the same and they don't get replaced easily. Whereas things well, like uh, bottle or um, well, they, ship they evolve, or something like that, they do. Yeah. They evolve, like for example, mm. in some dialects in Northern England, you know, they say the for, word for children is childer. Yeah, you know, mm. uh, yeah. It's, uh, there's a someone that said here would would it would make sense since the Angles were basically South Danes. Okay, well the Angles ethnically, ethnically the Angles are, they are the missing link between North Germanic and uh, and uh, West Germanic. They are like the smack in, in between, uh, and and these people left to England. So I mean it's hard to really, uh, um, well I mean you could. They could, I mean, those that stayed in England, uh, sorry, stayed in the continent may have been uh, absorbed within Danish um, uh, Danish uh, tribes and whatnot, but... Yeah, uh, Frisian ones as well. For, yeah, Frisian ones too. Um, yeah, okay, let's see here. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. Um, wow. I mean, I know we're just sort of uh, answering questions now, which is, which is nice as well. Yeah, I mean, like, hey, it's the first time doing this. I mean, it's just, it's just, it, it's really, I find it really cool to like really interact. Interact. Yeah, yeah it's really like, great. Really, yeah, it's it's fantastic. Is there everyone uh, else enjoying this kind of format? And uh, would you maybe like to see this sort of thing happen more often? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Let's have a look. I'll see if I can find any more things. Oh, Sarah says yes. Opie oh. Warren says yes. The fifty guy says <laughs> hell no. Yes, this is great. Oh, brilliant. Oh, Michael uh, Zayak says yes. Please, I probably put, put your pronunciation. I apologize for that. And then we have Ya 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 from Stefan Atli Thorvaldson. That is a great Atli. name. I'm just so yeah, jealous of that name. Patronomic, by the way, because the whole son thing, yeah. Because thing is, if I have a son, Hubbard, he will mm. be called Kevin's son. Kevin's yeah. son. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you made, hey, well, yeah, you made a video about this, did you? You scalag rib. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I did actually. My uh, video about the Viking, uh, or yeah, quote unquote Viking, you know, Norse Scandinavian names from the period, and on Iceland, I, I'm not sure if they still do. I think they probably do. Um, if you're someone's son, uh, then you'll be called uh, the name of the father and then son. So say if your father was called Arin Bjorn, which means uh, bear of the heath, which is one of my favorite uh, Old Norse names, then you'll be called Arin Bjorn son. Uh, 
Um, and if you're uh, a lass, then you're going to be named after the mother. So it's Dottir. Although sometimes this doesn't happen. And there's actually another channel I want to give a shout out to, um, Jackson Crawford. He makes a lot of videos about Old Norse. Very interesting yes. guy. He knows yes. loads. He so is the Old Norse man. If you're interested. Yeah. He is. We need but... to get him on one of these one day. Definitely. One day. We'll, we'll, we'll beg him. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we'll beg him. Yeah, one day. Evel's Hilbert, Hilbert <laughs> <laughs> Oh, in Frisian, actually. Um, in Frisian, we also have the son, but in Frisian, we have ma. So you might see, um, uh, I don't know, yellow ma, which means uh, son of yellow. So if I named my son Hilbert, I'd call him Hilbert Hilbert's ma, because that's the, uh, the, the Frisian thing. So we always Hilbert, have the joke. Hilbert's ma? That, wow. Yeah, because the ma on the end in Frisian means son of. Uh, stra means from and there's other stuff like that in Frisian but like so, we always make the joke of the fast food chain we call it Donald's Ma because instead of MacDonald which Mac is the Gaelic for son of we call it Donald's Ma because it's like the uh, son of Donald same thing I don't right, know just, uh, right. Frisian well, thing banter, is, but... it's interesting that you said the Mac because thing is the Mac actually comes from Old Irish uh huh yeah and that means son yeah, yeah, it comes uh, from primitive Irish actually, because a uh, little bit of a spoiler here, but oh. I'm, I'm I'm getting back into my uh, Pictish cultural analysis, and I'm currently editing my video on the Oum alphabet, and I have a little bit about that in there, and it comes from Maki, and uh, Maki is primitive Irish, and then that sort of developed to, as Kevin was saying, the Mac, which meant son. No. Uh, according to uh, Julia, uh, Julia Felis, uh, that in Spanish we have the E Z oh, yeah. for son of, like Rodriguez, uh, son of Rodrigo, Fernandez, son of Fernando. I did not know that. That's really cool, Julia. I, th I think you say, I think you say Julia, right? I I'm not sure if that's pronouncing correctly, but I think so. But that is, I had no idea about that actually. But it makes sense now. We can learn new things, man, from our audience. Who we can. We? This is great. Yeah. I'm learning so much. Yeah. Is it learning heaven? Yeah. I was thinking of changing my first name to Alfred. Thomas, if you want to make your name more sort of true to your like roots to the old English side, you could always spell Thomas with a thorn. Because I think Kevin and I both know someone who spells their name Thomas with a thorn. Okay, um, well, we, we both know who that is, but let's not, well, I mean. We're not um, going to mention who it is, but you know, so you could do that. Yeah, and, um, and then I, the thorn is the, the letter that we had before. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, but I will say this: I do want to give a shout out to someone uh, very cool and inspiration to me. Uh, is is that uh, there's a channel out there called um, "Survive the Jive" by a guy named mm. uh, Thomas Rousel. He is he is a cool guy. Uh, like he makes videos on all sorts of things, esoteric mm. stuff. They're basically uh, mini documentaries. Really, really recommend you watch them. He's he's. Check him out. Survive the jive. If you want to survive the jive, watch this guy. <laughs> yeah, You'll but see a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he has like videos, um, so sort yeah. of mini documentaries. So in Sweden, for example, with you have this culture before the Viking Age. I think the Vendel period. He has yeah, some Vendel, videos about yeah. that. Yeah. He has some videos about Indo-European stuff. And yeah. one of my favorite things about that channel is that he not only talks about the Germanic cultures, uh, like a bit what we've been talking about, but he also manages to link it back to India and to Indian cultures and things because yeah. they're all Indo-European, you know, Indo yes. comes from I India. Just, speaking so of Indo-European, that is very, very important because, you know, a lot of people are into all this Germanic linguistic and mythology stuff. Oh, well, India is irrelevant. No, 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 it's very relevant. Mm. I'll tell you why. Um, for example, the word for... Um, uh, you know, in, in, in Latin, we have Deus. We, in English, we have deity. In French, we have Dieu. In, uh, uh, in, in, in Sanskrit, we have Devas or Devi. You know? Yeah. So it's all interrelated, man. I mean, yeah. Even the mythology, you have, um, oh, what's it called? Um, Indra and Thor, I think. The, yeah, uh, yeah, in, the Indra, Indra. yeah, he's the, the thunder god. Of, uh, yeah, he, right. He's yeah. the thunder god. And, and uh, you have Thor. I mean, the, you know, so... so um, Gorm of the Gorm the Old of Denmark. Yeah, that's uh, the first king of unified Denmark, I think. Gorm. Oh, really? He's and then his son was Harra, I think. Was his son Harald Blaut Blautont? I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it, but I think his son was Harald Blautont. And then I think he was the first Christian king of Denmark, but Gorm was always strongly pagan, I think. 
but I'm not sure if I'm remembering that correctly because the problem is when you read so much history, things start to blur together. Yeah, <laughs> That's the problem. You can't like get it out. So sometimes I will make mistakes in my videos, which I'm very glad that people point out. But that's because sometimes yeah. you get two facts mixed together, or you just remember yeah, something my, slightly wrong. Yeah, I can totally relate on a, a kind of different scale. My biggest pet peeve when making videos, when I, you know, let's say I write an, an old English text myself, and like, you know, I think okay, it's grammatically correct. There's nothing wrong with it. I post it, and then I see a mistake glaring at me as like you know squinting at me you know and, and like you know shaking its hands ha 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 you didn't correct me you know uh you know, it's um yeah it's that's one of my big because you know, thing is um old english is not an easy language i mean it's it's a fun that's what makes it fun though it, it it's a it's a challenging language it, it really requires discipline you know and in, in 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 the in the way it is now because it's not really mm. spoken that much but uh, yeah history i mean even with languages i mean it really is it, you're totally right it really blurs together like because thing is the further you go go back in time especially with languages the similar that they are mm. like for example the word for my in old english is mean in old saxon mean in uh in i think in old high german miner it's mm. uh and, it's old, and, old Frisian, and i think it's the same yeah it is the same in old Frisian, and it's the same in uh, old norse mean so it's all like so it's all the same of the same thing you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean because i think one of the theories for it is that like every language used to come from one language although it's a very interesting point if you go back really far and you're wondering you know was it just one base language that was the first language and then the different groups split well, off and moved and, to be you know. to be fair though uh you know uh, we would learn from the history of english podcast uh kevin straub by the way check him out history yeah, of check english him out as well. history of english podcast great stuff but but uh, but he he points out that um, not all words in the in, not all Germanic words go back to uh, Proto Indo European. Like for example, the word hus that w w evolved in what we know now as house or or house. In, you know, it's in a slang word for toilet in in uh, Frisian. Well, I mean, well, like kakus is also <laughs> a toilet in, in in old English. Anyway, why did I say that? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, cause <laughs> it's funny. A lot of these words, you know the. You know, like like you wonder it. So it's so you have these proto Europeans, and they have these other people that were already here in in, in Germanic mm. Europe. I mean, so I mean, you wonder who are they? Yeah, and one of the possible things that could be um, pre Indo European, because the Indo Europeans are, we think at least, are people who spoke the Indo European languages, and they're basically the ancestors of the the languages that we pretty much all speak in Europe at the moment. But yeah. what we think might not be Indo European in origin is the Basque language, because we can hardly find any similarities between Basque and other languages. Because with like Proto Indo European, it might when you hear Hindi and uh, German spoken, you might think they sound nothing alike. But scholars have really, really looked really carefully in the languages, and they have found similarities between like languages spoken in India, in Iran, in uh, you know Europe. They found connections, so they think they must have come from the same family. But with Basque, which is by the way, Basque is a language spoken by the Basque people who live sort of around the border in the Pyrenees between France and Spain. But with that language, they just they haven't really found any connections with other languages. So they're like, what is this language? You know, it, it might be uh, pre Indo European, which would be really, really interesting from a linguistic and historical point of view. Yeah, because uh, with language, you get the mindset, you get the stories, you get all this stuff that, you know, we can really learn about human behavior and uh, the like. I mean, it's uh, it's fascinating stuff, man. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's see. We got some dialogue going on here. I talked about the subject with my Greek friend. He can't understand old English. He calls himself a Byzantine. As a joke, he calls me a barbarian. <laughs> that's that's also an interesting point, actually, that the, the Byzantines, so the Eastern Roman Empire, they yeah. called themselves Greeks. And I think they I think they spoke Greek as well. And it's sort of you you'd think they would speak Latin, but I'm pretty sure they did speak Greek and they invented all sorts of uh, they invented the famous Greek fire. So it's interesting that then this Eastern Roman Empire is then being associated with Greece and the Greeks rather than the Romans. The, the thing is, the thing about Rome and Italy, not many people know this, but there, is, there, there are two Germanic dialects. They're minority languages, like under like about a thousand people speak it. It's called hmm. Simbirin. 
And, so, and some people believe that this derives from uh, Lombardic, which is an uh, old High German language. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, the Lombards were a people that lived around there before they were probably conquered and subjugated by the Romans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's right. And uh, you know, it's funny. Speaking of like who else got conquered, the, the uh, I, almost said, I almost said Vandal, the Vandals. Yeah. yeah. And they had a bit of North, North Africa. Too. Yeah, they I think went in what we know now North is, Africa, yeah, yeah, and conquered places, and that's where we get vandal from. You know, when uh, vandalism is when you, you you trash something and uh, make it messy, and because that's from the vandals when they went and uh, you know raided North Africa and broke all the houses down and burnt everything because they were vandals. Yeah, yeah, that's right, and uh, it's funny. And the thing is, yeah, the, uh, the van vandalic uh, uh, language is an East Germanic language. And uh, it's like there's only like a few words of it. There's really not enough of it to be, yeah, revived. But, but this to kind of veer a bit off. Uh, but what? what but a but a, a Germanic language, East Germanic language that we do know that's well attested, is called Gothic, and that is and and, uh, and that was attested around the fourth century A.D. And little trivia about about good old Tolkien. That was Tolkien's um, first dramatic language that he learned um, as like for for leisure. He learned it for for fun on his spare time. Yeah, because I think Gothic don't they have a Bible in Gothic? Because uh, I yeah, think Gothic was still spoken until fairly modern times, but unfortunately well, I, the I, East I, I, Germanic ones have died out, haven't they? I think something like that. I think you might be because uh, thing is you had Crimean Gothic. Uh, that died around yeah. extinct around I think 18th century or something like that, and you, you think is if if it survived that all the time there would be more texts about it maybe there are and we just haven't found them yet but um so that's a thing too as I said before I mean if if you really want to know more about the past do do your own research yeah form your own opinions but at the same time if you have old books in your house or you know someone has old books digitize them. Because yeah. you never know what you might have. You could have some like manuscript from I don't know when, or some book that could have like or or like fairy tales that, that have remnants of the past linguistically or or um, mytholo mythological stuff. I mean, you never. Uh, no, 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 no. We're, we're talking about the, the the Gothic Bible, the Gutenberg Bible. That's yeah, that's, that's much more uh, further ahead. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the first printed Bible. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because the Bible was yeah, the Vulgate was it was the first thing that was printed in the uh, by the Gutenberg press. Then it was the uh, I think it was this Malius Maleficarum, and the and um, yeah, the Malius Maleficarum is literally a, a guide to what to do with witches. <laughs> yeah, like I remember I had a, a course about this in the, in uh, college. Yeah, they like what to do and how do you accuse them and all this all the jimbo about that. So. Um, yeah, uh, no, I, I just looked it up. I think the Gothic Bible is uh, was definitely written down, and that's sort of how we can uh, you yeah, know know a little bit about the languages. And, and that we a bit about Arianism as well, like like A R I A R I S I N I Arianism, like that kind of sect of Christianity or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's that's what the Gothics were. I, th I think, I think, I don't know because I. I don't know everything, but uh, yeah, because I think the the I might not be correct in this, but I think the um, Eastern Germanic languages were spoken in sort of where Prussia was, so sort of yeah, Estonia, no. Latvia, um, yeah, yeah, oh God, what's the other one? Estonia, Latvia, and the the, the middle Lithuania, one. Lithuania, maybe. Lithu yeah. Yes, that's it, Lithuania, yeah. um, and uh, you know th those countries in that sort of area because that for a long time German speakers were the people who were there you had swedish speakers yeah. as well i think on that coast because if you think the baltic yeah. sea one half of it the northern half are the scandinavian countries the southern half is sort of that area of eastern northern europe and there were lots of german speakers there lots of yeah, german the reason throughout europe but after world war ii they were all pretty much sent packing back to germany so that whole culture sort of died but for a long yeah. time that was you know yeah but yeah, that's right. And uh, knowing that, I mean, even the Baltic states, you had something called the Northern Crusades, where the um, Teutonic Knights, yeah, no, no not Teutonic. Uh, or was it Hospitallers? No, I think it's the uh, Teutonic I can't Knights. It, oh, you want about the yeah, oh, yeah. Crusade, uh, Crusade? Yeah, the, yeah, it's, it's Eastern, yeah, that's the Teutonic. Northern. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, Northern okay, Crusade. Well, yeah. yeah. 
yeah, yeah, they went in there, and I would think they would do a number on the pagans that you know. And, the Lithuanians but, um, were pagan for a long time still. Yeah, the, the Hungarians and, to the south. Um, uh, Tom Tom Russell he did a video on it's called Sacred Trees and he, yeah he, he, he was in with Lithuania and he talked about these people despite them being very Catholic they still gave this significance and, and grandeur to this very tree because thing is trees to the to the uh, to pagan peoples is very 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 vital for example the word tree comes from old English old English uh, trail which is mm -hmm. also the same word where the word the word truth comes from you know yeah and always... uh, another point about Oh yeah, no, yeah, sorry, but... carry on. No, no, carry on, carry on. Uh, well, another point about trees, which is again linguistically interesting, is that um, I think I think Kevin, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that in uh, Old English, a word for tree was bam, or was it bam or bam? Very, 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 very close. It's bam. You know, like or, or, origin of the word beam, you know, like a beam tree or just as yeah. uh, similar to uh, German Baum or Baum, you know, well, depending on the dialect. Well, the interesting thing is that in Western Frisian, the word for tree is beam. So you can see, you know, beam, beam, very close. And this is modern Western yeah. Frisian. So go to Western Frisia and uh, ask, I don't know, Dawa, what the big brown thing is with leaves. And he'll say, oh, this and beam. So you can see, you know. Yeah. Old English is almost still being spoken, kind of, yeah. you know, in yeah. some yeah. aspects, which is just in fascinating. Way, still, the thing is, you know, again, with trees, I mean, it's very significant. Um, you know, like historically speaking, you have the, the cutting down of Donar's oak, you know. Oh, Bonifacius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, an Anglo Saxon yeah. cutting that thing down, right. Um, you know, yeah, Boniface, well, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, Donar's oak. Um, you know, thunders oak and why oak trees? Mm. Out of all trees, why not pine? Why not uh, fir? With oak I trees, I think there's a connection, isn't there? L uh, oh, yeah, of course. Now, uh, and the Thor connection is, is like oak. Yeah. Well, yeah, because thing is, lightning is most is most likely hit oak trees. That's why it's mm. related to oak. You know, um, you know, so it's all interrelated. So I guess with ancient peoples, because thing is, you got to bear in mind how these these beliefs come about. I mean, they they, they derive from um animism you know like before everything it is spirit and everything and so until much later that um uh that, that uh that these things became personified into gods and goddesses and to reflect human behavior and human uh mm. in, in, interaction and whatnot and uh yeah i mean yeah that's well like, that's another it, yeah sorry I'm going. no 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 you carry on <laughs> No, no, I was just going to comment on um, on by um, Michael and uh, all oh, right. Yeah, I'll just quickly say this, and then you can answer that question. But it it's okay, sort of cool. also like why the gods and goddesses and lots of different um, you know old religions and uh, belief sets, while they all have also physical characteristics, like um, uh, Friar, you know, he's always shown depicted with a massive penis because he's the fertility god. So obviously that's a symbol of fertility. Uh, you, <laughs> are you stiggering away? <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, you know things like that, and also Thor. He's the defender of mankind. He's got, you know, he's got huge guns. He's got a massive hammer because oh. he, you know, beats the giants, which is also another interesting point. Yeah, I have a point I want to say that is very vital and might surprise all of you. Um, thing is, in the mythology, we have Thor, Thunor or Thunar, or wh wh whichever uh, 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 dramatic tradition you come from. Um, hmm. That uh, in, the, in the mythology he fights ice giants. His Roman equivalent is um, Jupiter. Hmm. Just as Jupiter, the planet, protects. Well, yeah, sorry, sorry, I need backtrack. Um, so Th uh, Th Th Thor's mother is uh, is Jorth, is is uh, is is um, actually an ancient. Actually, yeah, the mother of uh, Thor is Jorth. Hence, that's the old Norse word for Earth. Um, Actually, the more ancient mother of all the gods is actually uh, Ertha. You know, mm. going back to the, ne the cult of Nerthus. Anyway, I'm 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 going on a tangent. Anyway, yeah. so so the Roman equivalent to Thor is is uh, Jupiter. Just as Jupiter, you know, uh, and just as Thor fights ice giants, Jupiter, the planet, as we've seen seen the heavens, they uh, he, he, uh, the planet uh, protects Earth from ice comets. You know, but you know, mm. like people weren't stupid. You know, they 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 this had a different because thing is they 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 had a different way of explaining things. They didn't have the same vocabulary vocabulary like we do right now.
Mm. I mean, that's something to, to bear in mind. Pardon me, it's phone. very interesting when you see it like that. When I mean, because obviously, I don't know if people are religious on here at all, but um, if you see it now and you think, you know, the the the, uh, the earth was fashioned out of a dead giant and they crashed open his skull in the Gnunga Gap, and you might think, oh, that's just, just a load of rubbish. But if you think back in the time before we had all these scientific terms, before we could see all these particles and before we knew our clouds are made of this and the water cycle and the nitrogen and elements and all of that, what, how would you describe things like that? Well, you'd probably use metaphors. And then if we start to yeah. see maybe giants as being metaphors for natural disasters, because, you know, you can sort of see it comparable to that. And then the gods as being slayers of giants. Well, who do you yeah. pray to to stop natural disasters happening? That's well, right. you pray to the gods. You, know, you give a sacrifice. You sacrifice an right. animal, something like that, you know? That's right. Interestingly enough, like today in America, they, they name hurricanes after people. You know, Hurricane mm. Katrina, Hurricane this, Hurricane Andrew, Hurricane Hilbert. I'm so offended that there hasn't been a Hurricane Hilbert. I mean, come on, Hurricane Hilbert. I think that would be great, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Many metaphors in religion. Yeah, that's right. I think All right. Thomas is asking if there's still a Germanic pagan religion going around England. Um, but starting to get back up a bit you've got the big one is um osatru which is kind of uh, os is like meant gods like the yeah. asir in old norse and then yeah. i think true is like follower or belief in so that's no, sort of a big belief, one that's more yeah. based around the norse yeah yeah and the old english um what's it called the old english continent would be as a trail so it'll be like the easier but uh like trail meaning like belief you know mm. like trust in yeah oh yeah yeah that's it and then through is the, the old norse so that's yeah. sort of that um you can do some research into that because it's actually quite interesting to see how they're sort of bringing back germanic paganism with a more modern feel um i think the first temple is being built in iceland for like a thousand years which is quite interesting and exciting maybe that will be an idea for a history with hilbert vlog at some point down the line if i can get myself on a ferry to iceland mm -hmm. very interesting yeah. i think very interesting yeah, we can. Hey, we can, we can meet there halfway. I mean, we you should know, Iceland, do. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like between Canada and, and England. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I'll uh, start <laughs> making my little coracle right now. You know, if St. Brendan can do it, so can I. Yeah, well, anything is possible. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Right, I think we need to start yeah. sort of wrapping this up because we've gone on for a while. But I think we'll oh, answer how a few long more is questions. Uh, I oh, don't okay. know. I, I'm I'm scared of pressing anything in case something stops. But I think it's. Uh, uh, been a good hour and a half ish oh wow longer than expected longer than 30 minutes than we anticipated eh? yeah i know it's just been so much fun to be honest i just uh just yeah. you know time's flown by no. all right Sorry. hold on have you ever thought about the fact that so many independent cultures all came up with dragons will that also be one of those metaphors oh i i i i could uh talk about this i mean a, yeah, a lot of these true. old fairy tales um you know, some could interpret these as like that, that dragon being life. You know, a lot of these old, old stories, um, you know, like the, 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 well, the, the would be hero is like a kid, you know, he's kind of scared. Well, but after he, you know, he fights the dragon, he fight, you know, he becomes a man. Mm. And, uh, and, and we have these, these old fairy tales, you know, it's always the strongest, the wisest, you know, he gets the maiden in the end. You know, you can take that as a metaphor today is someone who has all his, He's on top of his own like affairs and whatnot, and yeah, you know, yeah. and the guy with the juiciest guns, the guy who's the bravest. You know, he's the yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Get um, you know, and we and we have this through through uh, our uh, you know our Germanic literature. We have Beowulf who fights the Wyrm. We have Sigurd who fights the dragon Fafnir. We have um, uh, throughout even other stuff. You know, we have Bilbo who fights uh, dragon uh, Smaug. Then we have later on this whole dragon knight, uh, dragon warrior thing. Even in in uh, things like uh, more, in more contemporary things like Skyrim. You know, oh yeah, and in the heroism as well, you've got Bilbo. Yeah. you know Smaug the dragon. Yeah, you know, those are all things in like Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings, Tolkien. It's pretty much all based in some aspect of history mostly a lot of the cultures in sort of norse germanic cultures as well and i think the i think kevin it's the um the is it the nibelungen lead which it's based on with the rings the lord yeah, of the rings I think, so. I think it's based on one of the sagas Maybe, yeah yeah i think yeah that's right i think it yeah it, it is an opera based off the sagas yeah i remember that uh by wagner yeah oh that's an interesting um 
that's a very interesting should, question by Vic yeah, here about the Mother Earth that. one. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm reading it now. How, how about Mother Earth? Many cultures evolved to uh, women and gods are supreme. Uh, it all. Well, yeah, thing is. <laughs> okay. Well, well, from my research deeply into Nerthus and all that, the idea is that that um, that Ertha, Earth, you know, all the gods can come from her. Like, mm. like Woden came out of her. No, no, no. Sorry, Woden is the is her husband. Yeah, and then from that, Ertha, which evolved into Free, evolved into uh, uh, Frigg, which may uh, or may yeah, not be the same goddess as Freya. Yeah, yeah, and and it's just a different, uh, you know, evolution. Uh, you know, you, you have in other in in uh, what we know now in Germany, you have other manifestations of uh, Bercha. Uh, you have uh, Percha, uh, uh, hmm. other different. I think that's the Slavic um, goddesses. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, well no. Uh, I'm thinking I, anyway, but yeah. So I mean, so the, it's the same goddess, but lives uh, through different names. You know, mm. um, you know, yeah, it's hard to really explain. I mean, I it, like you would have to know anthropology. You would have to mm. uh, my. If you want to know more about this stuff, you have to dig deep in w what I've done on like sites like archive.org and uh, Google Books. But you read uh, uh, like 19th century sources. They give yeah. you a different perspective on these things. Mm. Yeah. Like Holda, exactly. It is another manifestation. Yeah. yeah. It, like, um, like, I'll give you another example with, um, it's, it's particularly with the goddess um, Sunna, the sun, uh, feminine in the dramatic um, context that, um, uh, you know, when, when, e, uh, when uh, April comes around or Eastramonath, uh, uh, um, you know, so it's, it's, um, no, sorry, no, no, sorry. Um, Hretha Monath. So, like, Hretha, you know, some trans translate this as um, victorious glory. And what it is, is kind of this ancient idea that it, it is the, um, it is, um, it is the sun conquering over winter. Because hmm. nobody likes winter in, 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 in this time because Cross everything dies. It cattle very, go in the bar. You know, and for, further, further, even in old English, to say how old you are, you say how many how many years you you have uh, survived, basically. How many winters, probably? Yeah, well, exactly. If I were to say uh, I am okay, I'm 25. So if I were to say in old English, it have the um, five and twenty uh, uh, a winter. Mm. Yeah. So I I ha I've I have or I had no, sorry I had 25 winters, and I'm. Right now, I'm going on my 26th winter. If you know, theoretically, if I survived it. Um, <laughs> well, let's hope so. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. Um, Another thing with the whole the the woman Earth goddess is, I think um, what we have to remember about the religions now is that the religions in the West now all came from the East. They didn't start in the West. So, if we think about Christianity, well, where was Jesus from? Palestine. That's you know, that's in the East. Well, the, Bethlehem. The, yeah, the culture there was different to the Germanic culture that we had here. Um, what's yeah. another religion that a lot of people follow? Judaism also started there. Another one, Islam, that also started in the Arabian Peninsula. And these cultures had very different ideas to how things worked. Obviously, the desert is very different to our Germanic woodlands here. It's, so the yeah, cultures yeah. are bound to be different. And if you think of the earth as a mother, well, which sex produces the children? Well, it's the women, the female sex. So if you think yeah. of the earth as being a woman and the trees as all being sort of children, I know this is sort of really, you know, wishy-washy and whatnot, but if you plant your seed into the ground, that's almost like, you know, producing right. uh, crops and things like that. So it's bound to be a woman who provides, you know, the nutrients exactly. traditionally in the family. Well, it would be the woman who provides you know that kind of thing so that i think yeah, that's yeah, why that's right. people had and it, this goes right back to prehistoric times you find in prehistoric times the oldest sort of symbols of religion that we find are these little dolls and these are little dolls and they are females not males they are females and they generally have rather large cleavage they're generally um you know rather on the larger side because they are well fed like the earth the earth is the all giving mother the earth is you know rich the earth is a symbol of you know growth of fertility uh, and things like that so i think that's why the sort of the mother kind of idea and then that's very we very much see that in the germanic uh, faiths i'm not too um 
yeah. are learned on the other ones but i think that's less so for the uh, eastern religions which are more sort of you know hot dry desert areas it's sort of less of a thing there yeah. and i think traditionally at least in those cultures women were treated differently um, and now of course in germanic cultures women also had a different role to men but they weren't quite the same as the eastern uh, religions and then obviously yeah, christianity yeah, but, came to the west and things like that but yeah yeah that's well said yeah, you know like exactly like a lot of these things were personified you know like how humans can relate to these things so it's obviously a mother like uh mm. thing and uh i was gonna say um there's so much uh, under my mind uh yeah because and, and um, this is very important to realize especially when it comes to like looking back at historical religions and stuff like that um everything including languages everything is a develop development you know everything evolves over time you know like it's not all of a sudden you get you, you get free out, out of, of nowhere no it mm. came from something before so um uh it came from uh, uh not many people know this but if you know anything about the cult of nerthus um actually if you uh it's only i think uh 18 something uh that there, that there are two manuscripts of about that talking about that source about the whole chariot thing where um okay i'll, I'll briefly talk about this tradition where it'll be it'll be the start it'll be the start of spring everyone will go to this island in i think in, in germany it's called hugen or something like that um and you know they would come around and it'd be like and what would happen you would have this this woman the sorceress to uh, she would personify uh uh she would uh, she would yeah you know, impersonate the goddess like when people see her that's the the person manifestation of it and she and this priest would, would go on go on this um chariot and they will go from yeah exactly hugen yeah that's right uh they will go from town to town um and like there will be parties or whatnot you know and uh uh um, and uh, they're like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually writing a paper on this. So like, I haven't published it uh, to the public yet. I'm still working on this, but yeah. Um, and uh, you know, they go from town to town. There be a lot of merrymaking and music going on, and um, you know. But this story has been later on. It, it had been uh, you know taken by Christians. I mean, you know, uh, like it, it'd be something like it, it got corrupted to the point where like. Uh, one source said that there there'll be like the devil and they bring this gr uh, girl to the thing anyway so I, anyway so just to explain that this this whole ceremony the spring ceremony uh further so 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 after all this merrymaking when people get together and part of the reason why this whole thing started part, partly because of i think because of Frisians maybe that uh, had to do with trade uh, okay. yeah had to do with trade i think that might have to be a factor but but anyway but as the as the as the uh, what's it called the the chair returns back to its original like home if you will um what happens that two slaves are ordered to um to wash the chariot you know and the cloth that's on it and 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 bathe and clean the goddess herself and uh, in this ritual when they do this apparently uh you're, you're not gonna like what you're gonna hear but like uh apparently what happens is that these two um uh uh, to slaves, if you will, they apparently get killed, or they 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 are poetically sacrificed to the uh, to the goddess herself by being drowned or something like that. I mean, there could be we could speculate all we want why they are killed or not. I mean, it could be population control. It could be. Uh, I mean, could... every every ancient civilization killed slaves. The Romans had gladiators. The ancient yeah. Egyptians put slaves in tombs. So it's it's nothing new, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just going to take a quick moment to leave and uh, fill my water bottle again because my throat's a bit parched. Uh, so yeah, I'll I'll, I'll leave you on your own again for a sec. Uh, cheers, mate. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, because uh, what what this all really is, it's really a huge puzzle. You know, it's a really huge puzzle. Once you understand the, uh, and I just want to go back. One of you asked about. Um, Beowulf. Okay, when did the saga of Beowulf first come up and where? Okay, uh, that's a good question. So Beowulf, um, let's, you know, why don't we strip up the word, because a lot of in Beowulf, it's just a name. No, as we know in old English names, or I should say Germanic names, that um, that it's really compound words. And the word Beow is actually the word for bee in old English. And we have wolf, which means wolf, but as we learned from history of English podcast, that wolf is a euphemism for hunter, 
So it's really bee hunters. So people speculate that Beowulf was some kind of bear. But then you have the Norse equivalent of a Bodvar, a Bjarki. And like there is a, a, a Scandinavian almost equivalent. There's a saga, I think, with Bodvar Bjarki and him fighting a bear or something. Um, but to answer your question, when did it first come up? Well, we do know that it was written, it likely is likely to be written in the Kingdom of Mercia, which is in the central England, uh, Midlands in England. Um, so it was, therefore, it's written in the um, Anglian, uh, m mostly West Saxon with Anglianisms in it. Like, for example, linguistically speaking, uh, in, in West Saxon, you have Sweard, which is S W E O R D, Sweard. But in, in Beowulf, you have, you have Anglianisms like Sweard. You know, S W U R D, um, and, and other things like that. So give us idea because because thing is why 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 so much interest in the I'm sorry, we will tangent. The thing is with Anglian Mercy and Anglian is that it that's the origin of what we speak now. That's the that's the one. Whereas West Saxon, yeah, we have a lot of literature of it, but it it's not what we are speaking right now to this day. But um, uh, when I would say somewhere around. Well, we gotta th we gotta think. So this this story is probably orally transmitted by Angles, um, Angles who who probably I don't know. I I, I, I Helbert needs to get back because I, I need we need to ask the Frisian question. Oh, you're, me you're slagging me off when I'm away. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> So yes, we need to ask the freezing question regarding Beowulf. The thing is, so so so, Helbert, can you tell us? I remember you told me a while ago how Frisian, how Frisian and Frisia were like the the dominant economic, like they were the guys like they knew everyone apparently. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a bit about that? How they knew the Danes, they knew the, the uh, West Germanics people. Uh, yeah. You, um. So. This is something I'm going to be featuring in um, quite a few videos in the future about the Frisians. Um, and with the Frisians, if you sort of know the geography of Europe, um, they're sort of in the region of the Netherlands, a bit of northern Germany, and from sort of the, I think it's the 9th century, they colonized parts of uh, southern Jutland in uh, what used to be Denmark. It's now Schleswig-Holstein in Germany. Um, so that was sort of an area called... Machna Frisia, and don't be fooled by the name. Generally, um, it was outsiders who saw Frisians as being one people rather than the Frisians themselves seeing themselves as being Frisians. Um, but anyway, the, their position was very, very instrumental, and the Frisians became traders because essentially it was so flat the area that there was so much flooding that if you just built a house on sort of the narrow bank, uh, like in the Bible, it would just get washed away by a massive flood. So what the people did was, and th th there wasn't really much rock to build on, uh, Frisia Uralis, <laughs> um, they built Terpen, which are sort of man-made hills. And if you go to Friesland and uh, some areas, I think in uh, North Holland as well today, you can see that the, the towns, the older towns, are on a bit of a hill. And the church is usually right in the middle, um, usually because the Christians would later build a church on top of the old pagan place, but that's by the by. And when the sea flooded in, the people would be basically stranded. And because they'd made these man-made man hills, they'd be on essentially a little island in the middle of the sea because the land was so flat, the sea would just go right the way inland. So what the people then did was they'd keep sheep and they'd make pottery. Yeah, Groningen as well, the northern Netherlands. Um, and what they did with this was they'd make wool and then they'd dye it and then they'd go out in their boats oh. and they'd go and sell it. Um, so they could go down river, say down the Rhine to Completely. Germany. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just bear it back. I'm just going to get some, you know, water. You know. Oh, yeah, no yeah. problem. Keep going. Uh, I'll just ramble on about the free yeah, you know, See you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, if Kevin doesn't uh, fall over something in the meantime. But the Frisians were ideally situated because they could go down the Rhine into Germany where they could get wine. And with this wine, they would sail back up the Rhine and then go to England because, of course, as we know, the beautiful English weather isn't exactly the best for growing wine. So they could set, then sell the wine from down the Rhine in Germany. So I think in Mainz uh, and Strasbourg, 
they found sort of evidence of uh, Frisian traders. And then they'd go and sell it to the Anglo-Saxons in England. And often the Anglo-Saxons in England would have slaves for them. And later on, this sort of slave market would go to Ireland, to Dublin, which was a famous sort of Norse slaving center. And they would also trade with the Scandinavians and also with the Baltic states, right the way to get things like furs, pelts, uh, amber, that kind of thing from the Baltic to the rest of Europe. And they would trade things like wine from Germany and also millstones, as well as the things that they made themselves. So there's a pottery called the Frisian ware, which they would sell. Um, Frisian wool was very famous for being high quality because they'd have sheep on their terpen when they'd flood and then they'd get the wool off uh, and they'd dye it. And actually Frisian wool was some of the best to be found in the early Middle Ages. And the Frankish rulers who conquered Friesland um, in sort of a slow process starting and finishing around the 8th century, they actually gave as a gift to the Byzantine emperor, who was, you know, the big cheese in the world at the time, they gave him a gift of Frisian cloth because it was that important. Part of why the Frisians are very important. So a lot of the time you'll find Frisian traders cropping up because they are essentially the middlemen. The, the Frisians are very hard to pinpoint because they are obviously conquered by the Franks who were Christians in the 8th century. You have a massive battle with the uh, semi-legendary king Redbart in Frisian or Radbaut in Dutch um, for control over Friesland. But many of the Frisians, the process of converting the Frisians to Christianity took a long time and actually still in the 11th century the monks were complaining that the Frisians were still worshipping Donar uh, or as they called him Tongar while they were building churches everywhere and nothing seemed to be working and the Frisians rose in rebellion a lot of the time so a lot of the time when the Danes came the Frisians who were then also heathens like the Danes they would say oh you know what I'm not going to fight against you. We're both heathens. What's the point? So the Frisians would actually just get on board with the Danes, sail down the coast, plunder a Frankish town, and then head back home again. Um, so that's sort of the role of the Frisians, which I think yes. is very interesting because they're my ancestors. So yeah, well, just to go yeah. over uh, uh, this to add on to what uh, Helper was saying regarding uh, well the names of you got uh, got Thor and, and old Frisian actually. It's it's. Uh, you got Thuner, and then you do have Tonger, even in old uh, Frisian. So it goes to show that this is an old word that that, that, that has survived for so long. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Shall so, we uh, um, continue talking for another, say, ten minutes, and then call it a night? Yeah, so we've been talking for a long time. We? Yeah, sure, ten more minutes. Yeah, so it's going on five, two hours. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Five twenty, right here, and where I am, and so, yeah, and it's uh, uh, twenty past ten here. All right, so 10 more minutes of intellectual... History intellectual, and chill. History and chill. <laughs> <laughs> history and chill. That's what you... Uh, lad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, does anyone want us to propose another topic? Or, Kevin, were you going to say something about old Frisian? Uh, it's a beautiful language. Um, I know, I can I agree. There was more, I wish there was more of it. Um mm. Uh, attested. Uh, uh, what can I say about old Frisian? Um, you can find a grammar of it. Uh, they actually the book I I I I, I read the excerpt of early in this uh, show. Um, you could find it on um, what's it called? I'm always saying what's it called. So if I find it on uh, archive.org, if not, you can find it on uh, Google Google. Uh, mm. Uh, Google Books. Oh, here's a good question. Is there a link to Frisians and the Varangian Guard? I've never heard of one. There's definitely one between the Anglo-Saxons and the Varangian Guard. Um, mm. Even so much so that they changed the name of the Varangian Guard to the, um, I think, the Angeloi uh, Varangian, because so many uh, Englishmen joined the Varangian Guard after... Um, the Norman conquest in 1066, a lot of Englishmen, I think then the Varangian guard was mostly English after that point because so many of them went to join up with the Varangian guard. And I think they even had a colony somewhere. Um, I think I, I don't think it was the Crimea, but somewhere in the Bosphorus, which they called New England. So the original New England. But whether the Frisians ever joined, I mean, I'm sure one or two must have done because it was a viable option, I guess. But I'm I'm not sure if I don't think many joined, at least not that I've heard. 
de relatie tussen de Friese en de Nederlanders. Um, bedoel je dan de Hollanders? Of meer uh, gewoon de Nederlanders? I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, I know, I know, I'm just talking in Dutch now. No, But, it's all right, uh, man. This is a multilingual thing, you know. I was, you know, I said a few old English words in this, and you know, he's speaking Frisian, you know. And, yeah, um, uh, yeah. He was just asking about the relationship between the Frisians and um, the Dutch. But then I guess it, that, that's like quite a big question. Well, so, well, yeah, it is a big question. From 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 what I know about the Dutch, like like didn't a long time ago that like all of what we know now is like Dutch was once Frisian at one point. Oh, am I totally um, wrong with that? No, 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 that's sort of correct. Um, the Frisians mostly okay. inhabited, if you sort of think of the Dutch coastline, that was pretty much all mm. Frisian, but further inland, so the area yeah. the Achterhoek, that was more there, Saxon. There's something um, I forgot to mention. The thing is, the interesting thing about Frisian is that um, it, when it comes to verbs, you know, like it, it has a similarity to Old Norse in the way that. Uh, Is there any movie entirely in OE or ME? Not yet. Not On yet. Uh, learning the old English, you can get pretty close to it. Yeah, you get pretty close. I'm, I'm, I'm working on skits. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm going. Okay, I guess I'm going to pretend, pre, pre, pretentiously say this, but um, in some shape or form, I'm trying to revive the language. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I will be. Um, as I get more ambitious and and succeed more with my channel, I will make, uh, like, if. I mean, my, my dream one day is to make a film completely in Old English. That'll be my hmm. dream to do that one day, but we're not there yet. Because um, uh, there are a lot of things you got to figure out, like what is, like, we got to master what is more idiomatic to say in Old English rather than, because the problem with, with Old English, with a lot of people, including myself in my early days of learning it, is that you think, oh, okay, I'll answer, <laughs> okay. This fella. Okay. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Uh, is that a lot of people when they when they learn old English, they uh, they think they think in modern English, and that doesn't go well. Because thing is that like what is more common to say to give is actually the verb sellan. You know, like but when we say the word sell, we mean like something you know exchange of money and an an item. No, uh, back then it was another verb to give. So um, more like barter, probably when you exchange rather than giving monetary or coins uh, for something. something. Mm. Is France considered Germanic because of the France being Germanic? No, um, France is generally considered to be Romance. French yeah. is based on the Parisian dialect of French, um, which is then based on mostly vulgar Latin. Very few Celtic words have entered French again from Gaulish, uh, and the Franks. Didn't, the Frankish language didn't catch on in France. It's likely that only the nobility were Frankish, and but in Germany it did. I think even even then, even then the aristocrats, you know, the people higher up, the nobles and and like uh, the Franks, they probably spoke Latin if anything, because it was it was because Latin around this time was the uh, language of the church and whatnot. So um, yeah. I mean, I think they spoke Frankish, but the thing is, they probably spoke Frankish when they first came there. But after a while, it would just be easier to start speaking Romance because everyone else was doing it. So like the Normans as well, they originally would have spoken Old Norse. And you can find it in some places in Normandy, uh, like places that end in, in Beck, for example. But after a while, they started just speaking Norman French because, well, everyone else is uh, speaking Norman French. So, yeah, they, they, you know. they kind of like got absorbed into another example of this absorption where the, the Varangians, no, the, the Rus tribe, the Scandinavian, the, the Swedish, Swedish Vikings, if you will, they went to hmm. Russia. Uh, they, you know, like they went into Russia and some would argue that they founded russia but yeah that's oh, i'm already in the, okay i'm already it, gonna be it, killed for that saying that but anyway um depends on how you define it really i mean they definitely played yeah. a role but yeah they definitely they definitely played a role and but thing is but over time they married with 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 the slavic uh mm. i think the bulgars were there as well and the the slavs and and um yeah. the yeah and they became known as the kievan rus after a while Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting how even that's related. I mean, you have a number of words. I can't think of it on top of my head. That you have a number of Russian words that are of like Norse origin. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, even the word Russia, the whole Rus thing. Yeah, yeah. Rus. Yeah, exactly. One yeah, of the things, the theories for that is um, that it meant red. And actually, it's very interesting if you look at sort of the traditional sort of quote unquote Celtic feature is having red hair. But we don't see that in Brittany. We don't see it in Cornwall and we don't see it in Wales. 
but we see it in Scotland and Ireland. And one of the theories for why this is, is that you had the Norsemen coming over who had red hair and that they would then interbreed with the Scottish and Irish population, which is why they have high amounts of red haired people. And it's also thought that then the Swedish uh, Norse, uh, the Swedish Norseman sounds wrong, but you know yeah. what I mean? From that yeah. period when they yeah. came into Russia, nope. the people there with all dark hair, they would say, you know, oh wow, red, red hair. So they are the Rus. Possibly. The uh, uh, thing is, we have about like three minutes left. Um, so uh, we have yeah, a question we from. Uh, yeah, we have uh, a question from uh, Maurit Ma Snap. Um, do you, Hilbert, do you have an email address for your YouTube stuff? Like, if people want to contact you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have um, a YouTube uh, a YouTube channel, really. <laughs> um, I have an email address, which I leave in the description of every video at the bottom, um, and a link to my YouTube page, History with Hilbert on Facebook. So like that for information. I recently created an Instagram. I don't know why you'd want to follow that, but you can if you want to. And you can contact me on any of those, and I should get back to you at some point in time. Uh, well... Okay, uh, two minutes left. Okay, uh, do you recommend, you recommend the last one? Yes, minute? watch it. it. There's some uh, historical inaccuracy, but it could lead on to further knowledge and further reading, so yeah, I definitely recommend it. I mean, it's good. It's, you know, a lot of a lot of these shows now, I mean, it's really depending where you're looking for. If you just want to enjoy, you know, something, mm. you know, great. But if you want historical accuracy, you're going to have to look deeper in other places. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like I, I saw a few episodes of The Last Kingdom, and it's great. But, like, the thing is, as a linguist, you know, like old English, um, the way they even pronounce it, the way they even um, – yeah. the, the grammar is a bit off. But then again, oh, you know, yeah. like, like the thing with Vikings, you know, the two monks there and, <laughs> like, I thought it's done. See us do that. You know, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. you know it's just it, – Yes, it's Yasala. You know, it's 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 funny. But um, anyway, Agreed. and the um, guy in the, the Last Kingdom with this name, uh, who should be pronounced Stapa, and they're all going Stapa, and I'm like, oh dear. <laughs> but you know, if you can sort of turn it off and enjoy it for a dramatic piece set in a historical period with yeah. some historical flaws, you can really enjoy it, and I yeah. really enjoy it. So, and I, I give you I give you a t uh, another. Okay, we've got one minute left. I'll just say this. Um, <laughs> As far as like high fantasy stuff, well, I should say high fantasy. Well, things like Beowulf, you know that I can tell you right away that three D film with you know uh, of of uh, of Beowulf uh, is is a terrible example of like, I mean, as a movie, it's wonderful, like it's full of action and whatnot. But as like an homage to the to the actual epic, forget it because Beowulf did not lay with Grendel's mother. That never happened. <laughs> like, why would you anyway? I mean, ugh. Uh, I, I mean. Um, no, I mean, as, but oh, God, there's something. Oh, damn, it's already 5 30. We're gonna have to do another one of these because I, I think we still have a lot of stuff and uh to say. Although, I think we've answered quite a few questions, which is good. Yeah, I think we, we've, we did, we did. I mean, there's so I much really more good. to talk. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Can we just both from both of us just thank you so much to everyone who's tuned in, watched, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> triggered. And, and, you know, commented and uh, asked their questions and, and sat through us talking for like two and a half uh, like anyway. two hours you know it's really great and thanks for spending the time you know when you could have been doing other things to listen to us to go on about history and languages you know yeah, and yeah. thanks for being involved you know yeah thank you thank thank you uh everyone has come here and uh, from bo from both of our audiences i mean it really it really means a lot i mean uh, mm. we hope to do more of these and well hilbert i just want to turn to you and say uh, hey man uh you know thank you for you know uh you know having this with me i mean uh, you know and, uh, means a lot. yeah thanks very much for coming on you know it's been it's been really good fun the time has absolutely flown i think we first we were like oh we'll do it for half an hour and hopefully not everyone will have left but you know it's yeah, uh it's thanks. gone on for quite a bit longer and i've really loved it i've learned quite a lot from both you and the audience so it's been really yeah. great yeah that's right okay everyone uh thank you for all for joining and yes we'll do more yeah uh, absolutely i'm definitely up for it all right all right goodbye everyone what's up right, from, yeah for me and kevin until uh yeah, we see you again. be thou well everyone goodbye yeah. on Sien in Friesen, Friesen, until we see you again yeah, cool. Brilliant. What's the hall? So, everyone, and don't forget to tune in on Kevin. When's your next video coming out? Uh, tomorrow.
tomorrow. And don't mm -hmm. forget to tune in for Sunday. I should have another Anglo-Saxon history visualized and definitely go and subscribe to yeah. learn in the old English. And I'll obviously subscribe to history stuff. with Hilbert. Yeah, I'll put links yeah. in the description to everything. Yeah, cool. But everyone, thank you all very much. Have a good evening. And I'll hopefully see you all again soon. Hopefully. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.